Uh, are we live? Uh, are we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein I just got all these lovely new trains set up. Uh, for the fluids in orbit. And... Time for me to go get some, uh, life support. And then, let's see, uh, we've got a much improved throughput of beryl, less so beryl, def uh, certainly iridium and especially uh, imacite cave. Uh, we've got functionally infinite of that for a good while. Um, and we just set up energy three which should uh, already be going to the point where we'll get um, tier 3 science packs for energy. But we're waiting on a little bit more. Actually, no, we're not. No, we do have the cards moving already. All four cards for energy 3. Uh, I guess really the only thing we're waiting on is to confirm that this is all configured correctly so that we get the catalogs made, so that we get catalogs delivered here, so that we get tier 3 science packs made. But those should already be on the way. Twisty P, Zaxon, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Very punctual, thank you. I almost missed it because I was uh, just briefly getting distracted by filling out those trains. Because I had a, like two minutes before stream started. Um, what did I come here for? Life support. I'm carrying way more of certain things than I normally would. Um, all right, give me some life support. Maybe I should cram in some more... Oh, yeah. Like that. I was going to say, should cram in some more life support equipment. Because I'm not liking having to resupply my life support that often. Uh, I, I guess I could go and get this automated up in the space mall, but that'll take up space, because it can only be done in life support facilities. All right, let's head back up, if only to, oops, uh, if only to make sure this train doesn't get forgotten. We've got a bunch of small trains queuing up here again. Victor Magnus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And schedule, get rid of elevator. Fantastic. Now, what exactly is the problem here? So this is a problem I was anticipating, but I thought I designed a way around it. The moment that we get exactly the amount of X, Y, or Z resource that we're looking for, this thing takes from it. I think it's been working as long as uh, as long as we're only trying to one load one type of item here. Let's see. I wonder if whoops. What's the condition on this? Just set filters blacklist. I wonder if I could do a combinator that simply delays output of whatever you give it for a little while. I mean, I could definitely do that with a number of combinators, but could I do it succinctly? Evil Plum, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Um, this is just on or off with set filters, so it doesn't matter if we gain numbers. Why don't we do like... Hmm. Glacier Wolf. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why do I hear boss music? Not what I expected there, indeed. Um, uh, I would need it to be... Okay, I I'm thinking of doing a little memory cell, but the trouble is, how does it reset? We get a positive signal. I think I need more than one combinator. Each greater than zero output each times one. And then... Each less than... I want it to output input count each, but under what conditions? Under what conditions? I think I'd need three combinators, actually. One to normalize, one to do a timer, and then one to only output it if timer is above X. Unless... Uh, let's see, each greater than zero output each. There's our timer. But when's, how's it going to reset? I'd need even more combinators. This is getting out of hand. I was hoping to do it with one or two. Literally just the minimum number of combinators to delay a signal more than a couple of ticks. The ironic thing is, I think literally just delaying it a couple of ticks would do the job. Possibly. Each greater than zero output each. And that's it. That'll delay it by two ticks um, before the blacklist is added to this. Actually, does it need to be the other way around? If this updates two ticks slower, or one tick slower than this... I don't know. We need a train that's asking for two types of items to test this as well. Because we don't run into this problem if it's only trying to load one thing. Because, because if it loads a precise amount, uh, we don't meet the condition where we take stuff back out again. Because the train leaves, I, I think what happens is the train leaves and instantly the container is no longer accessible. Hmm. Hmm. That is an interesting question, though. How would we make um, a generic pass through everything that we've received for one second, but don't hold on to everything after we stop receiving a signal? That's actually pretty tricky to try and keep the combinator down anyway. Combinator count. Hmm. 
Normally the way we reset memory cell... Yeah, I would need to normalize and each greater than zero output each one. And then each less than 60 output each input count, maybe. And if we give it a constant combinator for a test input. Uh, each less than 60. That'll... No matter what volume this is, um, that'll cycle over one second. Maybe I could just do it like that, and then, so then if we switch that off... No, that just freezes the timer, it doesn't forget. That's the problem. Meowgamin? Sir L. Castle? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Meow indeed. <laughs> Every time I open up your stream, I feel inadequate in my understanding of this game. Uh, every journey begins with a single step. I was there too. <sighs> this is actually pretty difficult. Just because of the... Just because I don't want to have arbitrary combinators to have like an R for reset signal or something. Hmm. Hmm. What I actually want, now that I think of it, is we receive some kind of signal we cycle once and then stop. And we could have the inserter only react on, like, the tick at the end of it, perhaps? But again, if it's trying to look at two different items... Well, that's probably fine. Um... Damn it. So once again... I'm pretty sure I would have to normalize. That's one whole combinator. Just to change the volume, uh, change the magnitude to one for each positive number. And ignore the rest. And then. need another one to say uh, if everything equals less than or equal to zero because there'll be those big negatives to remove certain signals so this will only output if this is not going to output anything I guess I could do an R for reset we're adding more arbitrary combinators and then, while r equals 0, output everything input count. Connect all of those. Uh, and that's not what I was thinking. Oh yeah, so once this stops... So this should keep counting up, and then we turn this off, and it loses everything but r. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then I think we would need yet another combinator to only output anything that's greater than, say, 60. Is our electricity struggling? It is. Uh, well, we can do a little something about that. Mm. 
much of this is in range of the... Oh, all of it? That works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's upgrade literally all of these solar panels, and that'll probably push us over the edge. I imagine. Unless something's not connected somewhere? No, I think we're good. Bots are going to take this sweet time, though. can't believe we've only got 2.3 gigawatt here. What's using all the power? Maybe I need to efficiency module something. Uh, particle accelerators? Okay. Entity accelerator. Maybe I missed some modules. These ones aren't actually running though. These have negative 70 power consumption. Negative 70%. That is... They all have negative 70% power consumption. 3.3 <laughs> megawatt each, and they're still adding up to most of a gigawatt. And giving us some grief. Hmm. Alright. Uh, how about... Let's do an upgrade planner. Flat solar one to flat solar two. And everything within reach. And I'll just grab some of these. And my bots are gonna not do anything. For some reason. Uh, it looks like the upgrade planner has the same problem as laying out uh, floor tiles with bots. Whenever you lay them out in any significant volume, the bots are only given orders sporadically. So even my construction bots are being Rather unresponsive. I got a lot better in circuit stuff since watching T-Hacks. I'm delighted to hear it. How's our power? We're up to 2.5 gig. Yeah, this should be enough. I do want to upgrade all of this eventually. Uh, we're actually doubling it, going from flat solar panel 1 to 2. 443 to 885 kilowatts per solar panel. That is not insignificant. Cool, cool, cool. Let me go lend a hand up here. I would probably be better if I did not keep falling asleep to the ASMR of the stream. Thank you, I think. Uh, I need to drop off these flat solar panels I keep picking up. Oh, there's no broom, actually. Um, here we go. Let's toss them in here. Cool. Now, how's that Energy 3 looking? We got... we're still waiting on the other three sets of data cards. Uh, we're halfway, almost, to Lepton data. Fantastic. To our first train load, that is. We're about a third of the way through entanglement data. And we are... Uh, not quite two-thirds of the way through quark data. So pretty much, this is our bottleneck. Entanglement data. Um, I don't think we have enough blank data cards to finish a train load. But supposing that it gets replaced in time. 1.36 per second. I thought it would be faster than that. 
Maybe I should double this already. I was trying to aim for two or three per second for each type of card. Um, so what are we looking for? 50 times 100 stacks, 5,000 divided by... How much have we got here? A bit under 2,000? Whoops. Point three six. Uh, we're looking at at least thirty seven minutes before we get our energy three. Actually, assuming that the blank data cards keep up, which they might. T hack starts about ten p.m. for me. Still short on supplies. Um, not as much. Not as much. Beryl is still a little slower than I would like, but the other outposts um, were totally saturated. Uh, last I checked, even though I had to... Okay. I was expecting that. Um, I, I had to go and add more processing for Iridite, for example, um, to keep up. Uh, iridite ingots, iridium ingots, have been looking significantly better since five hours ago. Very, very nice. We are about 50 per minute, just under. That is multiple stacks of ingots per minute. Uh, I believe they stacked at 20, yeah. That's two and a half, almost two and a half stacks of iridium ingots per minute. That's actually great. Um, we don't even need to look. We're completely, and I do mean completely, saturated on all things imasite. Um, We don't have to think about that anymore. Not for a while. And... Ooh. Ooh. Oh, what a beautiful sight. Gerd is getting saturated. Yes, please. I love it. Fantastic. Beryl's the one that still makes us sad. Ingot. Beryllium. Oh, no. What happened in the last 50 minutes? That's not that uncharacteristic, actually. Uh, a beryllium ingot's busted somehow, or is it just a quirk of the system with the number of spaceships we've got so far? Beryllium here is saturated, so yeah, we need a ship here. Um, we've got... Well, let, let's see if it's correct, let's see if it's accurate. According to our memory cell here, we have zero ships outbound. And if we look at our spaceships um, this way. Uh, let's see. Iron Hauler 1 is headed for Hagen Orbit. Hagen Orbit, Hagen Orbit, Hagen Orbit, Hagen Orbit. They're all inbound. Uh, let's see. This one's coming back with Iridium. This one's coming back with Imosite Cave, or rather it's waiting to land. This one's dropping off Imosite Cave as well. This one's dropping off Imosite Cave as well. This one's dropping off Imosite Cave as well. Hmm. That is a little worse than I expected. I knew I would need like a few more ships to make sure that we didn't have as much of a problem with that. Um, and just to confirm, so because I should probably make it more aggressive. Um, because this chest right here is full of Imosite Cave Core Fragments, we're sending a signal of uh, Imosite Cave Core Fragment onto the central clock uh, signal transmitter on that channel. Uh, and at the outposts, what we'd look for is... If this is a pickup for Imosite Cave Core Fragments... 
that has to equal zero. Um, and if that does equal zero, we do output the time signal. Uh, and if the time signal is within a, within a certain range, then we send our information back to central so we can request a ship. Um, I'm thinking... I'm thinking just measuring the one container here is probably not aggressive enough. We should probably, like, just say that all of these have to be empty or something. If core fragment imicite in any of these chests greater than zero, then send Imicite core fragment signal. You know what? I, I don't need a decider combinator for that. I could literally just... I, I could literally just connect the wire directly. Oh, and now I have to rescue this guy. Okay. Alright. Uh, in the meantime, to fix this, we're going to need more ships. Which I am carrying a lot of what we need to make. Um, let's grab all of these. Need some tier 2 solar panels. I need uh, one of these. And I need a couple of these. And a couple of things that the uh, construction train carries. Mostly pipes. Let's go borrow one of our drop-offs that we're not using right now. Like barrel. How many can one ship hold? Uh, 18,000 something or other. I've actually got it noted on a constant combinator in each ship, and that gets used for logic. 18,520 is our theoretical maximum for Imicite Cave, or whatever type of core fragment, because they all stack to 20. Alright, so let's grab our blueprint. Fantastic. You know what? I should update this blueprint. Grab one of the ships that are waiting to land. Um... Select new contents. Fantastic. And I'm going to get rid of that other copy of it that I've got somewhere, just so I don't ever again ask myself... Is that... Are they both the final version? We need to manually give it one stack of uranium fuel cells. Because that's normally set by... When the ship lands, it's put onto the memory cell. And I forgot to bring... A spaceship console and nothing else. Whoops. Let's just fly to get it. So all ships can be not to all ships. Make that much space kept empty to... So all ships can be emptied if one is on the way. That much space kept empty. I'm not following... Uh, the spaceship's anchor target, the place they're trying to land, depends on what resource they're bringing back. And there's only one drop-off for each. Zero greater than X greater than max? What? What was I coming back here for? The consoles. Which aren't in here. Spaceship console. 
Uh, right here, actually. Fantastic. It is very hot. Just a balmy 38 degrees Celsius, no big deal. If a ship holds 50 and unload station holds 200. Oh, the unload station holds, uh, let's see. Two, uh, let's see. How many? How many of these are there? 9 plus 7 plus 7, 14, uh, 23, times 48, times 2, uh, 2208, plus 640, plus 640. Uh, plus what's on the belt, this many stacks. So, 3, 4, 8, 8, times 20. Uh, yeah, we can fit multiple spaceships of storage in the requesters and in the stations here. Stop requesting at 150 or 125. Well, I, the, the thing is, the reason why I'm setting this so much lower, instead of, like, this container has to be full, I think I'll try all of these containers have to be empty. Uh, for a Immersite Cave Core Fragment um, outpost to request a ship because of the lag time. Because ships take time to get there, right? Um, and because with this system I built, I'm not keeping track of how many ships are on their way back full of Core Fragments. Only how many are being sent out. Um, so I'm going to make the same change over here. We're just not even going to need this logic. Just link that like so. Um, and it's already set to read contents because it's a static request. That's the default. That's one less combinator that we have to configure when we make a new one of these as well. Might be confused on how the system works. Um, so this is a drop-off for erudite core fragments. Uh, if it's getting a sig if a signal is detected here for erudite core fragments, then all outposts that supply erudite core fragments will be unable to request a spaceship until this empties. And by then, there's probably, assuming we have enough spaceships, by then there's like already multiple spaceships that are on their way back to Hagen orbit uh, with erudite core fragments. So that's why we have to set that so aggressively. Or at least, uh, I don't know if we have to set it that aggressively. We're playing around with the settings, see how it goes. Will they wait at the fill station until there is a space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's ships, uh, like, I can pretty much guarantee Iron Hauler 5 is trying to drop off uh, Iridite Core Fragments, Immersite Cave Core Fragments, rather. Um, it's kind of like we've got infinite stackers in space. We don't need to build stackers, like with trains. Um, they're just waiting their turn to build this space here. Just a question of where they are stacking. In orbit, yeah. What is J? Oh, J is one of our new... Sh J is the ship that I just made. You can tell because... Oh. You can tell because the uh, nuclear reactors aren't warmed up. Good thing I checked on it before it got into interstellar space. There we go. Once that hits 415 degrees, it's going to be going a lot faster. Um, so that is Iron Hauler number 6, I believe. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Can we make another one? Um, we don't have any more spaceship floor. I've got one, two, three, three hundred and thirty. So that's a no. Not yet. Okay. What should we do next? Also, where is Jay going? I unhaul a number six. Look at how much slower it is than a ship that actually has power of the exact same design. Um, it is going to Stromhurst, which means it's getting Erudite. Uh, I would prefer if it was going to Exorion. I don't actually have a prioritization system for, like, which resources we have the least of back at base. Um, we're just going to depend on filling it with enough spaceships um, so that we don't bottleneck on spaceships. But for that to happen, uh, we first need a whole lot more aeroframe bulkheads, and for that to happen we need a whole lot more beryl. And beryl is our slowest resource, and it's also probably... I'm pretty sure... No? It should be a higher priority than Iridium, in terms of the signal ordering. Yeah. Didn't... wasn't Ixorion saturated? A minute ago? It is saturated. Oh, it was probably just the signal timing. Yeah, it's actually kind of pseudo-random, uh, which outpost is going to get a ship sent to it next. Which I don't mind, uh, except for the fact that we don't have enough spaceships. Uh, for the system to work that way yet. If I made... Weirdly enough, if I consume a copious amount of imasite, um, or if I just make more storage for it, then we'll get those ships moving and get more of the other resources. So let's consume those uh, Immersium resources, and we'll also build up more of a stockpile just in case we have a shortage in the future. Why not just set that ship to get that? Uh, the whole point of the system is it's generic and automatic. It um, sends ships uh, based on which outposts are full. Alright. Hopefully that is what we need right there. I do wish we didn't need that many combinators for it, but... Oh, I thought there would be a train queuing here. There is a train on its way. We should be able to see. It'd be better if it was a train picking up multiple resources, but... Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Actually, I should set that a bit higher. Because the bots take time to bring this over. Maybe I should make it like an anything signal. Output signal R... Uh... So that this picks only one signal. That oh, should be fine. I, I, yeah, I'm going to change this to like 10 seconds. So basically, only after 10 seconds, 
Um, is this thing going to try and take stuff out of the train that's not supposed to be there? It's going to be the opposite. Set filters blacklist as opposed to whitelist of this. Uh, and it's just going to receive those signals for 10 seconds before this activates, and then it's going to forget once it stops receiving signals. So this is basically just... All of these combinators are just to do the same thing as a buffer in oxygen not included. Was it a buffer, or... I forget which. It's one of those long ones. You just set it so that it has to receive a signal for X seconds before it actually passes something through. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so I don't suppose... I'd really like to force picking up some barrel. I could do that quite easily. You know what? I think I will. I'll set up something temporary until we have enough ships. Or just in case we find ourselves in the position of we've expanded too much and we've fallen behind on ships. Um, I'm going to put a constant combinator next to... Next to this thing. And basically... Any core fragment type. Actually, let me just put, like, a bunch. We've got three types that we're picking up right now. Uh, any signal detected for whichever core fragment type, um, the outposts are not going to request. So, first one we did was this. Then there was Iridium, and then there's Beryl. Ber beryllium core fragment. Alright, switch that off, and leave these two switched on. And we should only get ships going to pick up Beryl core fragments. And I might just put a combinator here so that it's easy to see which ones... Are active. Or I could put a negative. That that kind of shows that we don't want these. All right. So if we look at the outpost, uh, because we are receiving. Anything other than zero for core fragment MSI cave, we're not passing this through, therefore we're not reporting, therefore ships don't come here. Um, and the same thing for erudite, just for the moment. Because that's receiving a negative one, it's not passing the time signal through. How is a time not a thing in Factorio? A time not a thing? Must be a mod for that? What do you mean, time not a thing? Philip B, Albion Light, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Alright, so where are our ships? Uh, there's two? Wait, 37k? Oh yeah, that's two ships. Two ships are outbound to pick up Iridite right now, if this is correct. Stormhurst Orbit, and... or rather Stromhurst Orbit, yes, fantastic. One, two, three, four ships are waiting... are either in the process of emptying or waiting for... oh! Is this one ready to launch? Just about. Which green signal are we not getting here? Oh, we don't have a destination yet. That's weird. Did we break it? 
Fuel check, water check, bots aren't moving check, and... And... What's the other condition? Oh, erudite core fragments in the logistic net. These shouldn't be storage chests. Don't tell me it hasn't been launching because of that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, I forgot that this assumes that every detectable core fragment uh, in the logistic network is in the ship. We do get negatives when the bots are moving it around, but that's okay. Yeah, so now it can launch. Well, that was making things worse. Although, considering how much we've still got in storage here, I don't think it amounted to any more of a problem. Um, this too must pass. Alright. Um, do we have some room to cram this in? Probably not. Oh, up here. There we go. Okay. We did at least get one more ship back in circulation, and it's going to barrel. Perfect. We'll keep that going for a little while until we actually have barrel again. Should I... Well, I guess I already have made a very crude prioritization system based on how much stuff we've actually got back at base. Pretty much, if anything is detected here, then Immosite Cave Core Fragment is hard deprioritized. But then there's the lag time of the ships going back and forth to sort of throw things off. Which we just, we can basically fix that by having a few more ships. And it'll effectively add more storage. If there's a ship or two in orbit waiting to drop off here, all the more core fragments of each type that we've got stored. Okay. Um... Maybe I should make a storage block for, like, Immersium Plate, for example. It's actually still filling up, so I don't think that's the issue. Hmm. More importantly, Iron Hauler 3 is almost at Exorion. We can actually start making barrel ingots again. How's our science looking? Ooh. We just need entanglement and leptin. Leptin should get there way earlier. We've got uh, about 17 stacks to go. And closer to double that for entanglement data. We are, of course, bottlenecked on blank data cards, which have been flowing continuously as far as I know. Maybe you need to just make another block for blank data cards. Oh, that's weird. That was probably... they were getting recycled from the junk data cards. Yeah. So, in the last hour, just barely, we haven't, except for like, okay, in the last 58, 59 minutes, we haven't dipped below the maximum speed of this block even once. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we should build another one. Let's 
Uh, let's build this up here. Because why not? Grab our scaffolding train. Wait for inactivity. Grab our construction train. Uh, don't forget the four space manufactories. 24 decontamination facilities. That didn't take long. Wait, why is that set to four? Oh, there's 20 here somewhere that I'm not seeing. No? What? Did I typo? Huh? We've got them here. The set request here is the same as what should be in this, uh, in this cargo wagon. This indicates that the train has been loaded. They're in here somehow. Oh, they've been in there all along. Fascinating. Then why... Whatever, as long as we've got them, it's fine for the moment. Wait for inactivity. And then... And then we didn't... We didn't actually get the scaffolding. I don't believe I've updated this build. So hopefully no shenanigans necessary. Wait, do you have bots? You don't have bots. Almost there. We do have bots. Okay, fantastic. Fuck yourself. Over here, wait for inactivity. And blank data card go burr. Probably going to need some more modules. I think just holding this is dropping the UPS, yeah. Alright, a little, little bit more please? Don't tell me the bots that are creeping back over have been reserved to put this here. Yep. Alright, blank data cards. Also, this is missing for some reason. Left click, no shift. Fantastic. A timer that you can set to activate in X ticks. Um, where exactly will we implement that? Do I have a storehouse in the train? I don't think so. I'm relatively close by. I think I can handcraft one. There is time. It is measured in ticks. 60 ticks per second, I believe. Yes. It takes exactly one tick for a combinator to do something. To take input and then spit out output. Uh, it takes zero ticks for information to be transported across wire 
and that's why when we make a memory cell, um, it's actually just a single combinator with its own uh, input linked to its own output. So we're basically making the smallest possible circle in the game for a circuit. All right. Let's see. Each of these... Oh, we don't have speed modules. Wait, what? We don't have speed modules? Oh, the blueprint didn't have the request for them. Okay. Um, let's see. Decontam and Space Manufactory. Speed modules. And go. Do I have enough speeds? I do not. Anyway, what I wanted to know is... We can consume 2 times 65.28 uh, 130.5 rough data storage substrates per second. We can produce... Uh, 31.68. I think this isn't our only block for it, though. Well, let's check prod stuff. Storage sub. Rough data storage substrates. Um, well, over the last hour, it's been 3.2k per minute. And theoretical max rate here. Theoretical max rate here. Can actually measure it this way is 3.64k per minute. We're looking at 7.3k per minute to support both of those continuously. I don't think we do need to support them continuously, but at least not yet. Uh, but yeah, we would need another block. They aren't at the original build. Both beacons should not be the same. What do you mean? I copy-pasted the beacons from here. I just need to go get more speed modules. This one can go back. Oh, did you mean the construction train didn't have beacons? I really have to stop with the huge requests for spaceship floor. Let's just get rid of all of that. Where am I going? Here it is. Gonna need a lot more speed modules than that. And I guess I'll drop these off in the mall. They'll eventually find their way back. Probably. Actually, since we're no longer crashing cargo rockets full of these things, I'll have to do something deliberate to get rid of some of this stuff. Because there isn't a consistent throughput. Oh, right. No, no, no. Okay, I think I know, understand what you mean with the beacons. Um, so this is two speed modules. This is two speed modules. This is two. And this is four. Okay, then. Speaking of speeds, I should probably grab some more. Looked like you put the same stuff in both beacons. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because the uh, the big machines fit a lot more speed modules.
Okay. So basically we're going to be working through our backlog of rough data storage substrates. There we go. These should rate the same now. Nothing changes. Fantastic. And we're looking at about 30 blank data cards per minute until we fall behind on rough data storage substrates. How long will that take? I wonder. Um, I didn't actually have that many in storage, so not that long. Because I didn't use a splitter here. So I didn't fill these up entirely. Okay. More importantly, how long till we get more blanks down here? A little while. Alright, what else should we tweak? And why are my bots like this? They still haven't done all this? Really? Oh. No, we've got the flat solars. Bruh. What? Where are the construction bots? Zero out of 41. They're all here? What? What are you doing? Go, go place... Is it because there's nowhere to put some of the tier 1 flats? That might be it. Then again, I don't know why the one hovering with a tier 2 flat solar panel is doing so. That's... That's very rude of you. Okay. Yeah, I think that got them moving. Okie dokie. Give me a sec. And how's our barrel doing now? You're headed for Hagen Orbit with... Iridite. This has to be with barrel. Fantastic. Fantastic. And you're probably picking up barrel. Exorion orbit. Fantastic. So all of the output uh, outbound ships. It's probably only one of them. Uh, should be headed to pick up barrel right now. Yes. Fantastic. With more barrel means more spaceships, means we can saturate our spaceships for our auto dispatch system means we don't have to worry about uh, this happening, basically. Not to mention just straight up not bottlenecking on the spaceships. Alright, how's Iridite doing? That's Beryl. I don't think Iridite is going to be fast enough to prevent some ships from 
going there for a minute. Probably wouldn't want to, actually. I don't know. Let, let's... Let's switch these off. And see how it goes. Now that we've at least forced two or three spaceships of barrel to come. Since we patched it. Alright. I know we don't have enough spaceship floor. Turn this back into a buffer. Request spaceship things. We need 400 something. Um, to make our spaceship. 418 floor, only 68 wall, but walls are easy. It's actually only a little bit of pipe. Maybe I should put it here so I don't have to involve the construction train. Eh, it's fine. Little bit of this, little bit of that, and the stuff that's easy to forget. One of these. We're not automating those. I should probably do that. Just make sure we have at least one. Uh, don't forget the add-on power poles. What shows as yellow cogs in the spaceship blueprints? Uh, it's just entities that store information and stuff. Um, item uh, SE struct generic output. I'm not sure about that one. The other one is generic clamp east. So this little uh, this little entity here, I believe, is one of them. It's the pass through uh, for the wires. This little invisible thing that we connect the wires to. Uh, and there's also this, but it doesn't show up here. You often see, well, every time you place a spaceship blueprint, you'll see this thing um, hovering over the floor where the console is supposed to be. There's a similar entity for crafting combinators that sometimes gets left behind. All right, how's our barrel? We're at least processing some core fragments. Fantastic. And we're making ingots. Beautiful. Nice. We've been making some barrel. But we have so much catching up to do. Uh, I guess now would be a good time to do some design, right? We're sort of just waiting on a bunch of resources to move. Looks like we're about to get lepton data. Which, as predicted, just leaves entanglement data. And we'll have some energy three signs. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, um, so what should we design right now? Uh, maybe... Energy 4? Material 3? I'm thinking Material 3. There's going to be some stuff that needs, uh, Energy and Material 3. So 
so for material 3 we need to start with friction data, ballistic shielding, radiation shielding, and explosion shielding. Explosion shielding was the thing that we needed to bring up explosives for. Uh, what do we make these in? Friction data. Is mechanical facility. Ballistic shielding, mechanical facility. Uh, radiation is, oddly enough, radiation facility. And explosion is thermodynamics. Radiation facility. Can I get rid of this? There we go. Uh, and two mechanicals. That was for friction and ballistic, right? Friction, ballistic, radiation, explosion. Cool. Uh, let's look at the shape of them. Those are not very similar. They do both use lubricant and blank data cards. Um, they do both take material testing packs. This one also needs pistol mags. Uh, and it recycles iridium plate. This one just recycles heavy bearing. And other than that... Oh, it also recycles girders. Uh, other than that, the outputs are very similar. So what if we put them in the same block? What mod allows you to open the creative mode on the same save? It is called Editor Extensions. Repeatedly crafty. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You'll want to go to mod settings per player tab. And at the bottom of the editor extensions options, there's a setting called testing lab. And if it's set to anything other than off, you'll be able to just use the editor shortcut um, to jump back and forth. Uh, you won't be able to do things like spaceships or cargo rockets uh, in this parallel surface. Uh, with your main save, you'll have to do a separate save for that. But other than that, very, very cool. A couple of things to watch out for. Make sure you don't have bots. I thought I was in this train. I think it probably threw me out of it. Make sure you don't have bots flying around, personal robots when you jump to the editor, otherwise it'll bring them with you. Uh, and they'll be stuck here, although you can get them back, but it's pretty fiddly. Uh, also, don't be flying a spaceship that has auto clamp. So, if I'm flying the construction ship back, I'll just turn this off so the ship doesn't clamp. Because if it does, while your character was on the ship, uh, and you're in the editor. When you try to go back to your main save. Uh, the surface that your character should go back to no longer exists. And we found out the hard way what happens when that occurs. Is we get teleported back to the spawn on Nalvis. Okay, so far kind of bad. But... It, that's not all. Um, everything that we built is hostile, including our gun turrets that have coverage over the spawn area and kill us in less than half a second. So you'll want to avoid that. Maybe give it a save just to be safe before you mess around in the editor extension surface while you're in a spaceship. Alright, so we're going to be looking at 
same layout, probably your mechanical facilities on either side. White area beacon in the middle. And I just want to fit as many as we comfortably can. They only have one uh, fluid output, so we can put them close together. Easy peasy. Um, and they're going to need some swap chests because they're recycling things. So I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing with that. We're going to have a 2 by 2 container in between these two. Uh, let's put some speed modules in. Negative 70% power consumption. Alright, so how fast would this be? 8.1 cards per second. That's probably all we'll ever need. Unless dependencies for friction data. Um, and apart from scrap, all of these output speeds are pretty tame. Total output for solids is uh, less than 90 per second, so less than two regular space belts. Welcome, welcome. Fraser K. Okay. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Um, so the way we're going to do girders... Girders are the only thing we're not going to output. It's going to stay in the chest. So we're just going to do uh, friction data and scrap. can make its way out of these containers. Uh, what are the speeds of these individually? 5.44 per second for uh, scrap. Let's do fast inserters, because why not? The only reason actually, apart from the fact that I can barely see them, um, stack inserters would probably be fine. Uh, apart from the fact that they're so hard to see, um, is I haven't just fully automated them in the mall upstairs yet. The only reason I hadn't fully automated them, though, is because they cost a bunch of imasite. Um, they do cost... Oh, I accidentally said the thing that we really have to worry about, which is imasite. I meant to say immersium, but we're swimming in immersium now. We, we can't... We're honestly getting Immersium too fast, and it's a problem with our current setup. Uh, but yeah, this is always saturated now, which is nice. The only reason it's a problem is we don't have uh, quite enough spaceships. Speaking of which... Uh, that's not working. I think I will still have to force it not to send ships to... Honestly, it's probably just Core Fragment Imasite Cave. But that should already be happening. Yeah, it is. There should be zero ships outbound to pick up Imasite Cave Core Fragments. Headed for Stromhurst, headed for Stromhurst, headed for Stromhurst, headed for Stromhurst, and headed for Stromhurst. Okay. I think because of the pseudo random. Wait, no, that shouldn't have been able to happen. You're telling me there's four spaceships headed for Stromhurst orbit simultaneously? How much storage do we have here? Oh, and another one. Hold on, one. That one probably counted. One, two, three, four, five. Um, if that ship hasn't left yet, this should say... 92,000? Yeah. 
Yeah, we sent five ships all to Stromhurst. Uh, our counting system for how much how much is on its way there is working. But for some reason... Core Fragment Iridite. Let's see. Core Fragment Iridite signal we should have been receiving from here. Which we are. Okay. Is it outputting? It's hard to say. Can I pause it? Uh, it doesn't really help. I'm pretty sure it's outputting. If time greater than zero, if red signal equals... Yeah, so that pulses. Wait, why do we pulse this? Four fragment greater than zero. Output red. So we're not sending that when there's a ship here. That's what that's for. That's why it's not actually sending. Okay, but... We are sending like 80k core fragment signal when this is full. Um... And that is on the red wire for central dispatch. Can I add another one? Core fragment emissite. Or iridite, rather. There we go. Okay. So we're sending the amount of Emersite Core Fragment we've got in these chests. Uh, it gets sent through on the red wire on the Central Dispatch system. Central Dispatch, red wire... Yeah, that does get passed through. Okay. So... If Core Fragment Iridite is greater than Signal 1... I think that's right, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it... Cause we've got that much storage, because it's designed to work with bigger ships. If we had infinite spaceships, um, we would still... Assuming that enough of that had accumulated before we sent anything, we would still send five ships to pick up Iridite Core Fragments. Okay, then. So it's kind of a bursty system. <laughs> which is all the more reason we need more ships, which is all the more reason we need more barrel, which is catch-22-101. Um, can we get... That's not a lot. Let, let's borrow some... Uh, Airy frame poles here. Just put them here. We'll make some scaffold. We'll t steal some scaffold, put it in here so we can make a whole bunch more uh, spaceship floor. I do have a tiny amount of airy frame bulkhead here, but it's not going to make... Uh, it's not going to make 25 spaceship floor, so we can pretty much ignore that. How long does this take? It's quite fast. Yeah, we're already about to run out of those poles.
I wish I could make a temporary stop that was a train stop. So I could, instead of having to watch this right now, I could immediately schedule it to drop off here and then go back to its usual schedule. Because that's what we're, we're about to do. Um, looks like it's already caught up, actually. Alright. Off we go. Same thing. Just gotta wait until it's done and delete that drop. I would expect 5 ships with 90k stored and 18k per ship, indeed. I could, like, divide it by 2 or something. Until we have more ships, perhaps. Maybe I should do that. Um, or I could use these offsets that I left room for. We can basically pretend here that there's a number of ships already on their way. Uh, how about three? So, about 50,000? We're going to pretend, as far as this calculation is concerned, that there's three extra ships uh, already on their way to pick up Iridite Core Fragments. And I'll do the same thing for... Uh, for Immersite Cave Core Fragments, and not for Beryl. And then... Let these run wild. And hopefully once all these are moving again... Oh, hey, there's no ships dropping off right now. Perfect. What do we got? On your way to Hagen Orbit with Iridite. We're going to see that a lot. Two, three, uh, four. This one is headed for Stromhurst as well. <laughs> Good gravy. It's all erudite. Right now, literally, our entire fleet is on erudite duty. Um, but as soon as they get back... It should only send as many as two ships at a time to each outpost, other than Exorion, which is really, really close, and doesn't produce that quickly anyway. So, JMO, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. At least there won't be an erudite shortage. Yeah, it's really nice to go from a shortage to just totally saturated. Uh, look at those girders. I was going to say beautiful, but we're actually still waiting on the ships to get back. Well, no. This is still saturated. The Iridite Core Fragments are still getting processed. Got a few minutes before work, indeed. Alright. I still want to make another spaceship or two, even if I have to do a bunch of manual messing about. Let's send you up the elevator early. And... I'll get... I'm pretty sure there's only one place requesting Aeroframe Bulkhead. No, 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 no. Bulkhead. Oh, make that two, at least. But I think I set the priority for this super high. I did not. Surprisingly. All right. Aerof I mean, priority... 
Request priority plots. And I can just... Oh, it's already here. I can just set the provide threshold here to however little we've got. Which appears to be about 2,000. 40 stacks. There we go. It's already priority 1k, it is. Oh, so it is. Yeah, 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 here it is. I'll, I'll keep that out of the way where it's easy to spot. Okay, spaceship floor incoming. Uh, which means another spaceship. Oh, how much is this? One, two, three... Yeah, yeah, it's not enough. We already established this. There we go. Just need to make another couple of hundred. All right. We got left and data. Entanglement is being made, and it's definitely about to get its first train load. What a beautiful sight. Swim for a shipyard near the mall yet? Almost. Once I get enough ships that the barrel actually flows consistently. Uh, which honestly should be now. Now that I made that change with the offset, we're just waiting for these ships to get back. Uh, and hopefully not drop off so much iridite that they get clogged. Which might happen, actually. Oh, that's barrel. Oh, we have lots of barrel here. Cool. So, at least for the nanosecond, we're actually bottlenecked on processing barrel core fragments. But... We already had it set up with the full block here. Um, we can deal with 48 core fragments per second, and the whole planet on Exorion can only give us... How much? 13 times... Uh, 18 core fragments per second. How much did I say this was? 48 or something? Yeah. Suffice to say, we're not going to be running this at full speed for a little while. So we should have, um... We should probably have approximately max rate of our beryllium ingots right now. We're looking at about 44 per minute out of a stack size of 100, which is huge. Uh, for ingots, that's insane. I was considering um, actually doing a targeted search for beryllium. We're going to do some more targeted zone discovery. We've obviously got our end game barrel planet right here, but it's going to be a minute before we can clear it. So maybe we can find another one nice and close to the interstellar map. Can those trains keep up with one stack per second overall? considering the small stack size. Uh, yeah, they're really, really fast. And if not, we can always add one more train. Um, proof of that, I would say, is the fact that iridium ingots are bare over here.
Where's our train? Here it comes. I'll show you how fast it is. So this is a hundred stacks, and boom. And then we go downstairs. Oops. Missed it. Oh, here it is. And we head over. Uh, it would probably help if I moved the beryllium core fragment processing a bit closer to the space elevator. But it's still not that long of a trip. Not with these trains. And it's empty. I wish we could see stats on how long it takes to do a lap. Then we could pretty accurately calculate um, the throughput. But yeah, we can always add another train with that exact schedule. Alright, first candidate is Imbrium. And it is almost no solar. It's really, really small though. I'm not going to do a uh, another outpost with no radius. Uh, Atos. Also, I don't have energy beaming, so low solar isn't as attractive yet. Uh, another one that's right next to the uh, interstellar map, which is good, but pretty small radius. Let's double check the ones we've already scanned for barrel. Oh, I have this one that I marked. That's got lots of biters. It's going to be a while. Um, butterfly? Whoops. Is decent solar, which means it's far from the interstellar map. Radius kind of sucks. Not getting much luck right now. How's the radius on all of these? There's a 7.2 with lots of biters. 7,000 with lots of biters. Hmm. Yeah, we're not getting any with a golden combination of stats. Alright. Doop a doop. It's taking a little bit longer now. Taking just a bit longer. Um, but hey, here's our catalog threes. Fantastic. There's already enough there to fill a train. Because these all arrive at, in one train load or nothing volumes. So we're going to be getting a whole train load of comprehensive energy catalog. That's going to take uh, quite a while, actually. Over an hour. Welp. Uh, I guess we'll have energy three science in an hour. With infinite erudite now, you could just start delivering weapons to Achilles. I could. That's maybe not the worst idea. I don't know, the scale of it is really, really, really big, though. Iridite, uh, weapon delivery cannons are not cheap with the Iridian pile drivers. Maybe I should use nukes. I think I should just go for energy beaming. Energy beam. Uh, yeah, we literally just need to do material three and we'll have it. Which we were working on. Um, before we got distracted. Okay. So let's say we do these like so. And... 
How many inputs do we have? One, two, three. Uh, on this side, it's like five. I'm going to need some caffeine. Heat's making it rather difficult. Okay. Uh, the thing is, we need to have room for the fluid outputs as well. I could move these up a bit, if necessary. Maybe that would be neater. Let's see how this fits first. If we go for... Something like this. Then... This wouldn't have room to work. Yeah, that would be a problem. Was Achilles where the spider bro thing was, though? And you didn't want to flambe the planet? Uh, no, the... Spider Bro is on, I think it's the uranium planet. Yeah, here it is. Uh, in the same system as our Imosite and Iridite. Um, it is a 5,000 radius planet. Um, with an awful lot of biters on it. Uh, and I really don't want to flambe Mr. Brontion. So that kind of sucks. Uh, I know the energy beam has a habit of, like, jumping from target to target now, but I'm not going to fully trust it. I wish I could put uh, shields that would block the energy beam. I know I could put shields that would block the energy beam globally, but that doesn't help. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Minky. Minky. Uh, terrible radius again. Parent Angelus. Angelus is not Achilles. Um, what was next? Spiriso. Uh, let's see. Decent radius. Zero biters. Pretty far from the sun, which means fairly close to the interstellar map. I think this might be... I think this might be our boy. We're going to have to go via the anomaly. Um, I'm not too worried about that. As in, I was going to say, like, this is our opportunity to test that the system to bounce off the anomaly with the dispatching actually works. But we've already tested that. I'm pretty confident in it. And if it messes up, it's only uh, 90... 96,000 Delta V away. Which is relatively benign. Um, but yeah, I guess this could be our mid-game barrel. Uh, so we're not going to fly in the conventional manner all the way down to Wexavis. What's up, Morbid Dragon? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do we have... Oh, no. I haven't set this again. Um, I know we don't need quite this much, but I'd rather play it safe. Why does this request stone? What the hell? Uh... Yeah. Uh, if we've already got the plating, then we'll head out and get started on our first... Foenestra using outpost. I'm kind of excited, not going to lie. Uh, 
How much is on the way? Zero? Oh, we've already got 3150. Uh, and we've already got 3150. Fraser K found the boss greeting. R -r -r -r, indeed. Do we have everything in here? We're missing some blue belt. Glad I checked. Uh, it's not unlikely that I already have enough. No, I think I need a little bit more than one stack of, like, these things. Uh-oh. Petri Cottontail, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you doing well. Looks like you have more stone in those lower boxes. Oh, because it got sent. It was still on the way after I changed that back. Luckily, it was only a little bit. Alright, I need to go get some blue belt. Um, or I could, and should, automate doing that up here, actually. I might just steal from myself here. Yeah, that'll do. Because all, all of these are prerequisites um, for each other. I'm also going to need one of these. paste and connect all right so now the auto crafting system up here damn that's quick the double superior inserters can't keep up Oh, it's probably the bots that we're bottlenecked on. That makes sense. Do we have Immersium gear wheels up here? We do not. I believe we already brought them up here, though. Oh. We have not. I left room for them. Wait, did I... label that wrong? Uh, yeah, this is Gerda, this is Gerda, this is gear, this is gear. That's a little bit confusing. Um, I'm trying to find a way where I could copy paste, but no. so this should be Gerda, right? Immersium beam. Alright, beam, beam, gear, gear. That's better. And it looks like they're already set up. We just don't have vanilla scheduled trains running these yet. So let's make a couple of those. Um, this is for bringing stuff up, yes indeed. And we need the pickup. Full cargo, empty cargo. Give it some... Solar panels and engines. And a bit of fuel to get started. And there's our boy. Off you go. To bring us gears. And next one is beams. I'll do the schedule first so I don't have to remember. And 
Oops. Now we just need the additionals. Fantastic. And that's it. Let's check that the other one is working. Uh, I think we did gears first. It should be up here somewhere. There we go. Oh, I forgot to change that to one second because we definitely don't need five. Fantastic. Oh. Oh, this is waiting for fuel. That makes sense. All of this just so that we can make the top tier ground belt in space because sometimes that'll be convenient in the mall. Tumbling satellite. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good, or I barely know her. Oh, no. Um, of course, there are other things that we need these for in space uh, in a bit. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone to the trouble. If it was going to be really low scale, I would have just skipped the productivity bonus for the last step. we go. Drop into a depot. And drop off our girders. And now it's LTN's problem. Speaking of which, I haven't quite set the requests up here. These both stack to 100, right? Yes. I'm sure we'll be needing both up here sooner or later. And gears. Fantastic. Should be a train coming to pick one of these up in just a moment. Oh, actually, it's look f looking for 120 stacks because of the way this works. So, one more delivery before that happens. Here they come. Sometimes convenience is greater than efficiency, indeed. I'm alive. How goes SpaceX? Not too bad. I, too, am technically alive. However, we are peaking at... 38 or 40 degrees Celsius every day for weeks at the moment. And I am not enjoying it so much. Other than that, pretty good. That's toasty alright, yeah. Especially when you're in a sealed room with no air conditioning to keep the sound reasonable. That's always cool. No, wait, the opposite of that. I do have a couple of things I can do to keep a bit cooler. Speaking of which, let me get a drink. Fantastic. There's our girders. And... Uh... Oh, I didn't put any of the prerequisites in here. So for everything that is a prereq, um, we'll allow up to one stack. In the big chest. Um, and 
that includes the underneathies. And we need to white this them up here as well. Oh, I think it's supposed to be a negative. Yeah, it is. Uh, did I forget to do the fast loaders? I don't think so, actually. Oh, the loaders, yeah. Belt, loader, underground. Oh, and splitter, tap. Loader. Underground. And splitter. Uh, where is it? And splitters down here. We're only going to request half a stack, but we're going to allow it to go up to a whole stack. These should just remain in the chest in the first place anyway. Usually. Alright. So that should keep our belt system going. Um... With only four machines, we might get some semi-jams like this. Until we reach certain thresholds. Oh wow. <laughs> that is quick. F for the bot, indeed. Was the same for me last summer, ain't great. Got a kitty pool to soak your feet in during stream. Honestly, if not for the fear of splashing my electronics, that would seem like a great idea. I feel like AC for a few weeks would be acceptable noise. Uh, believe it or not, it's explicitly... It, it's in the lease. No air conditioning here. No, no installing the air conditioning. Cool and normal. Cool and furthermore normal. Alright, um, is this gonna get built? Yeah, it is. Prison? Are you in prison? Uh, standard renting in Australia? Comparable. At this point. That boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let me know where to send the cake with a file in it. Prisons have AC. Maybe I should commit crimes. Alright. Um... How much did I even ask for? For the, uh... For the belts and stuff. It should be like... Oh. Oh, 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 no, no, no. No, 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 no. We... We don't need... We don't need large volumes of obsolete belt tiers. I do want a bunch of blue belt, and sometimes we'll use the fancy belt. But uh, this stuff is just for prereqs. I'm either going to go for blue belt or for purple. I think I would always skip green, right? Like, blue is, at this point, it's at the sweet spot of easy to make, but very effective. And then purple is the best we can get.
These are awful inefficient, and sometimes simple fans are better. I did used to have, or I do have, it's broken, uh, a big, uh, like, sideways fan. I should get another one. But then again, you'd probably hear it through the mic. Uh, the horror stories I've heard about renting in southeast Queensland right about now, indeed. I'm not saying the pitchforks are coming. Uh, for legal reasons. We won't hear a fan unless it's on jet engine mode. Your noise suppression is good. Nice. Yeah, I have to say this, uh... Obviously you could do better, but, um... If, you, if you're in the... How can I put this? Uh, it, 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 if you're looking for like decent quality but like budget, if you're in that kind of market for a microphone, the the Yeti Snowball, really really good. It's like a hundred bucks. I think, as far as I know, it's about the only microphone, or it, when I shopped around anyway, it's about the only one that's like. Okay, I want to pay enough to get something that's actually decent, but not multiple hundreds of dollars, please. I generally don't think you can do that much better without spending thousands. Yeah. I... I... I would... tentatively believe that. Um... So did we get all of the blue belt that we were asking for down here is what I should be focusing on. And I think by now the answer's probably... Uh, I need to increase the requests for blue belt, probably. Where are they? Bump that up to a couple of hundred, at least. And this is already a thousand, this is already... let's make it 500, just to be safe, and 250 splitters is a lot. To upgrade, you would want a good directional mic and a good compressor, but those won't be cheap. Yeah, it's a pretty big leap. Um, you know, uh, we'd, we'd be talking about an... Uh, an exponential acceleration in uh, the, the scale of how I was doing as a streamer before we're looking at that. Um, but yeah, this mic, you know, for the budget, really, really good. Um, so why aren't we getting undergrounds and splitters if we did get oh oh this might be a little bit of a problem because the uh because the loaders in the signaling order have implicit priority over the transport belts, which are um, prerequisites for the loaders. Um, having only four machines, so we don't have that redundancy of setting recipes, could be a bit of a problem. Because we could run out of the regular belt. Hmm. Let me just turn this off for now. Uh, I think we already got enough loaders though, right? Yeah, we did. That's why. So, within 30 seconds, that'll shift. For my old work content creation, we got most stuff... Rode mics? R-O-D-E? Pop filters and stock mounts? Worked a treat, nothing against Yetis, we just had a few die early days. Uh, so we went rude and never had issues with them. Uh, I don't know if I've been lucky or what, but... 
Uh, I haven't had any issues with this one. I did drop it just a little bit once. Uh, the mount is a bit more loosey-goosey. But other than that, it's been totally fine. I have heard good things about Sure. A bunch of streamers I've watched jumped onto the SM7B, indeed. Alright, so now we're getting belt, now we're getting undergrounds. Um, you know, for all the time this took, I could have just gone down to the mall downstairs, but... Uh, this will, you know, this will set us up so that we don't have to do that next time. Was there something else I want to do before we go on an interstellar trip? Um, it's going to be about 40 minutes before we get our first Energy Science 3, unless we want to force a delivery. But... Energy beam is what I'm most excited about. We need material science for that as well. Um, so I'm not too worried yet. What else could we be researching? I'll just double check. The planet that we were going to, yeah, has zero biters. Nice. Very good. One thousand. Damn. Of course, uh, I could definitely claim it as tax if I'm, if I got to that scale. Well, I'm pretty sure I could. I would certainly hope so. Probably not looking at that this decade, though. Um, let's do some design while we're waiting for this. So I don't think I was going to fit this the way I was hoping to. Um, we're just going to extend it vertically. So this would go up here. We'll get rid of the output pipes in the middle. And how about we move that down a tile? Kind of like that better. Oh, wait. No, this is fine. So we're going to have output fluid more or less like this. And like this. And like this. Seems good. Uh, we won't be needing this here. Are we going to have room? If we stretch it out that much? Let's see. Oh, what was the other thing? One, two, three, four, five solids. Hmm... And it's going to have the same shape. So something like this. What's the recipe? Uh, ballistic shielding data. Okay. This one's going to be the harder one, so I'll see if that can fit first. And... We drop. Needs a good mixer slash preamp thingy to go with it. There's a lot that I would have to learn um, to actually take advantage of something like that as well. So I, I gather if one does not learn these things first and just buys something like that, it's a big waste. It's also a pretty big investment in figuring it out. Popular mic in podcast slash YouTube. 
everyone buying it because they saw it, someone else use it? I mean, if it has a good reputation. I, I think I see what you mean, though. Uh, what am I doing? Counting the inputs. One, two, three, four, five. Um, we're going to need another container. Not just for the space, but to manage the output. Oh. Yeah, this isn't going to fit neatly. Hmm. How fast is our consumption here? Not that fast. 4, 8, 40 pistol mags per second. That's a little bit faster. We're up to 48. Um, and about 3 iridium plates. 1 girder. 4, 8, 12. 52. About 52 items per second. I wonder if... A couple of superior inserters could keep up with that. What did we say? 52 items per second? 40 plus 12-ish? Um, let's give it a blue belt. Oh, I can't. I need to get rid of the space here to test this the way I wanted to. Well, how about we see if it can keep up with two blue belts of stuff? I doubt it. If it even comes close, then we know this is probably fast enough. Don't care what we're putting in. Oh. It is almost keeping up with 90 per second. With this direct insertion. With the uh, superior inserters. You can see the amount of glass that we've got in each of these containers is only climbing up pretty slowly. In that case... Uh, what was it? 52 per second? It could definitely keep up with that. No doubt. Oh wait, 45 plus 22.5. 67. If I do a half belt here... Oh, hold on. Could I... I want to test three half belts. Oh, I know, just split it here. Just put down a splitter. So they should be keeping these empty, which they are. Which means that these could definitely keep up with our needs. At least until we upgrade the modules. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if I want to do it this way, actually. What if I do two station drop-offs? So many items. I could steal... 
uh, material testing packs and blanks from this side. What's the max rate for the whole thing? 12 blanks per second, 36.72 material testing pack. And then we only need heavy bearing as well on this end. So we'll just use some belts to steal those from over here, perhaps. In that case, we would need heavy girder, iridium plate, and pistol mag to drop off here. Won't you have better belts then? Oh, no. No. Um, just the same as normal SE. Um, for the belts that work in space, there's only two tiers. The second tier is deep space transport belt, and we don't get them until the game's practically over. Like, we're not going back and putting these in. With our old builds when we get it. And, and they need Naquitite anyway. Uh, and it's actually the inserters that were going to be the bottleneck. Oops. Put it in its own block. Like with the purple three back, maybe. Um, I am cooking and melting. I'm going to take a short break. Let's save real quick, just in case. Got plenty of life support. Actually, give me, give me more. There we go. Save. Let's throw up some words on stream. Why are they different colors then? Oh, uh, just for aesthetics. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the only one to have said this, but yeah, deep space belts, they're just way too late in the game to bother to use. Like, you've literally got something approaching a hundred different builds um, in space by the time you've got the deep space transport belts. You're not going to go back and patch them all. Alright, let's do some LTN screen saver and some words on stream. Pink pajamas. Words indeed. Good to see you again. Alright. We'll start words on... Don't forget to cool your comp down with water. I'm not doing that. Uh, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and we'll see you soon.
Okay, that's a little better. Satisfying, indeed. Nicely done. And let's continue, shall we? I wonder what, what we're up to now. Just out of curiosity. Oh, good. Almost... Almost 40 degrees Celsius. I was afraid that we wouldn't exceed the estimated high by 2 degrees today. Okay. Alright. Let's try not to die. Um... RV Park, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Should probably check on our spaceships, huh? The fact that they're not all stuck queuing here seems a good sign. Um, this one is ready to go. And if it's not launching yet, then it means with our offset. There aren't actually any outposts that are full. This one is full. Oh, it must have a ship or two on its way. Um, same with this one, so let's see. We've got two ships on the way to our first outpost. And two on the way back. And we've got a total of how many ships? Six now, I think. Iron hauler, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, these two are right on top of each other. Five and six. They're both headed for Corsal orbit. Hmm. So two on the way back, two headed for Corsal orbit, one here, and the other one trying to drop off barrel. Uh, no? No, there's two in the drop-offs right now. Let, let, me, let me look. There we go. So why aren't they launching? This one's ready, and this one's ready. Shouldn't the Iridite planet be reporting? We've got the same offset for these two. Oh, is there still iridite here? That's beryl. Here. Yeah, that might be why. So this has to actually empty before we send a ship to pick up iridite in particular. And since beryl is our only slow one, Um, we haven't reached... How much is it? Apparently we've got 74,000. So why aren't we sending a ship there? Oh, because... Because the barrel... Um... Okay, I might have been too aggressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about... How about we check the first four of these, or five, no, four. how about the top left four containers? If there's anything in those, stop sending ships to pick up that resource. Wait, what? Oh no, that makes sense. Uh, I need to get rid of that nonsense as well. 
all of those extra... Whoops. It's fine. Probably. Hurry up and empty. I should just go over there. You know what? Why don't I take the faster train? Go fix all of that mess. Stupid weather extremes, indeed. Melt at 25 degrees? Uh, we've had some days where it doesn't get down to 25 degrees at like 4 a.m. Yeah. I've come to f feel like 30 degrees is cool lately. It's, it's not great. Figured the bots were going to do that. I should have just come here and done this myself. Alright. I think that was the only one with a mess like that left over. Indeed. Alright, so where now are our ships? Other than this one, obviously. According to this, we've got... Uh... Three ships? Yeah. Uh, three ships on the way to the Iridium outpost. Oh, sorry, the, uh... The Beryl outpost. Huh. Okay, then. <laughs> Like I said before, this system is a, p a little bit bursty. I guess that's what that's just what happens um, when a we don't have quite enough ships. Uh, we are bottlenecking on ships, and b we had them before we uh, tweaked the system a little bit more. We had all of them queuing up to drop off one resource. Why were the extra chests there? Because we had like three or four ships waiting to drop off Immersite Core Fragments, or sorry, Immersite Cave Core Fragments, um, and therefore they weren't going to go get other Core Fragments at the time. Alright, back to the editor. Um, maybe I should just do multiple train stops here. So the thing is, we're going to get 100 stacks of each resource at a time. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 500 minimum. We can fit 640? Technically. It's also 5 solids when we've only got, like, we've sort of only got room for... Or outputs here. Uh, considering how slow things are, I think this is... Except for the pistol mags. Uh, this is a job for sushi belts, I think. One, two, three, four inputs. All very slow. Yeah. It was a little bit more than one belt. Of pistol mags. Hmm. What if pistol mags go like this? And we'll have inputs on both sides. Um. What's what are the what's the speed individually for pistol mags? Three point four per second. I could always do a superior long inserter. I 
if we are doing sushi, we could do the resource swap with the sushi belt instead of with these chests. At 29C in room, I can feel my brain slowing down significantly. Yeah, absolutely. Sushi go here? Hmm. We don't quite have as much storage as I would like. What if... Oh, that just fits. Okay. Okay. We could do our standard input. Oh no, this pipe. Oh man, I don't want to have to move this down. I might have to though. Unless I'm going to make an exception for the pipe here. Or I could just do it like this. But the point is... Oh, yuck. I want this belt here so that we can... have an immediate reaction to how much of each resource of, out of the main four that we've got in here. Mm. Also, I'm realizing I probably don't have room. Uh to do our four outputs here. This build is really wanting me to move all of this down a bit. So... One, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three, four. And then we can just do one to one to one to one ratio. That should be fine. Simply merge them in. Don't need anything too fancy here. So we're looking for material testing pack, a uh, heavy girder, iridium plate, and it's good that those two are going to be on opposite sides, because then we can put recycled stuff on either side of the belt, we don't really have to think too hard about it. And blank battle cards can go here. And I don't think we need two belts, do we? Not at all. It's like 12 per second. I can't squeeze this up in here, though. Sushi belt will have to come back around like that, unless I move this down again. Maybe like that. How about this? Oh. Uh, insert is on this side. Just 
fuck this over here. Alright. So we insert. How fast are we individually? Like way less than one per second. Probably just the one fast inserter is fine. And I th think We want to output right before the inserter, so it can take its own recycled stuff straight away. Seems good. Let's look. No. This would appear a little bit more consistent, I think. Actually, yeah, I kind of want these about as far apart from each other. That's as close as it's going to get. Wait, no. Wait, yes. Well, let's do it like this. It's kind of more consistent on this end. And then over here we could do it like this. Alright, we need to test this. Um, let's get a infinity chest. Couple of inserters. Red wire to each container. Set filters blacklist. Um, for up to four items in K2, that'll work. I'm going to go shift right click, shift left click, and I shouldn't have done that yet. Whoopsie daisy. Okay. Material testing pack, heavy girder. Oh, I already did that here. Testing pack. Uh, less than... I'll just set all of these to a hundred. Um, girders. We'll tweak them in a minute. Oh, uh, what was this? Iridium plate and blank. So that'll allow a little bit of everything um, into here. I don't know how we ended up with ammo. But more importantly, um, this is what our... Hmm. Oh, oh, for the outputs we're going to need to filter away uh, scrap and ballistic shielding data. I think instead we'll just do a whitelist for the stuff that we are putting back on the belt. Girders and Iridium Plate. Girder and Iridium Plate. Since it's two things anyway. What am I doing? There we go. Fantastic. Sushi, indeed. Now, the only flaw with this is if we're not taking from the belt, we don't have any room to put stuff back into the belt. Um, so it could get jammed. Like, if we didn't have bullets, for example and the input belt got saturated, and all of the inputs from the input belt in the middle got saturated. Um, that would actually be a problem. The belt is much faster than it needs to be. Do we have room, I wonder, 
to slow this down a little bit. Uh, it's going to be close. Hmm. What I want to do is something like this. And that's going to be input priority for the recycled stuff. So when it's backing up, this will get slowed down and we'll get 50% normal output. Um, can't really do that there. It has to be after that splitter. And... I think we're in trouble. I think we're in trouble. Is it possible to fix jamming by making a condition to only run the sushi belt if all the input belts have enough material? Um... That would actually sort of be the opposite of what we need. Um, or is there a better fix? I'm trying to make the better fix, but... Well, I can make the better fix logically, but I don't think we can fit it here. Um... Is there a way to... I don't want to move this down again. Uh, I could just do the part where we organize the output on this side. We've got plenty of space up here. And then... Do it like this. Or wherever we want to put that. Wherever it's going to look neatest. I think the other way around, perhaps. Or about here? That seems good. And let's do this the other way around. Which means I'm going to have to turn all those inserters around as well. But that looks a lot tidier. Alright, so that's going to go there, and there, and there, and there, and there. So as you can see, we've got 50% saturation on the belt. We've got one to one to one to one uh, for each input. And considering that we need only at most four per second, um, one eighth of a belt uh, is more than enough for each individual input. Oh, hi, Andy Gaming. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wait, what? That's that's backward. We need the output just before the input. And this is whitelist for the filter inserter. Yes. All good, how about you? I am melting. Um, yeah, and then that can go there, that can go there. And lubricant input, we can do pretty much however we like. That actually fits perfectly. This should be pistol mags. And pistol mags. 
weather was super hot here as well on the weekend. Yeah, I've got a friend in South Africa actually. It's rough. Whoops. Let's put these together with pairs. Especially with those gaps. And we'll do our lubricant input just like that. Nice and easy. It even reaches across the gaps. Uh, that's actually looking pretty good. Um, so we're going to have, as usual, lubricant input is going to be quite slow. Really slow, actually. So I don't particularly care if we don't have the most fast um, fluid input from the trains. Let's not forget the wire here. And felt like it felt I I was swimming with the amount I was sweating. Oh no! Are the pistol ammo things on a separate belt? Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, that needs changing. I'm gonna need a more advanced um test input thing. just because there's five of them. So let's math this out real quick. Um, we have, without counting this container, which we will be using, we've got 640 storage slots. Uh, we're going to have five inputs at exactly one train load each. That's 500 stacks. So technically, that shouldn't pose a problem. It could get a, li a little bit imbalanced, though. Um, however, with the extra 200 or so, let's call it, let's see, 256 over 4. We can do 64 stacks for each uh, resource in here. Uh, it should be able to sort itself out. So we'll just look for like 110 stacks of each thing. Alright, so what are our stack sizes? 10, 50, 40, 50. Alright, so... What was it? 64. Um, 640. And then multiply that by 5. 3,200. For the go. Wait, there has to be some space left over here. Let's do 60 stacks each. Otherwise, we can't recycle. Um,. If this ends up being completely full, the sushi belt is going to jam. So we'll do 60 stacks each uh, for the limiters. It will go a little bit over, but that's okay. Um, so 50 times 60 is 3k. That's the same for blank data cards. And 40 times 60 is 2400 iridium plate that we can fit in there. Why are we bucking? 600 not 60 items. Oh, true. Fantastic. Uh, now then. Now then. I think I'll just... As far as the test input goes, oh, how much do we need? 20. Cool. I don't even have to make this difficult. We'll just do the pistol mags here. And here. 
for here, I guess. Doesn't matter. And once again, we'll use set filters blacklist. Put just a little bit of each resource into that container. We don't use shift right click, shift left click, at least not without removing the bullets. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. That actually looks pretty neat. Where are we going to do our outputs for... How much scrap do we output? 24.48. Individually they are 2 per second. I was considering letting the ballistic shielding data and the scrap go onto this sushi belt and we'll just grab it from here with a filter. Uh, but I think at most we should only do that with the uh, with the data cards. Oh, that's further forward than I thought. Is that actually a problem? I don't think so. Uh, Coco Jambu, the best. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Gordon Freeman, good to see you again. Hey, attempted to message the other day, but hit weird timings. Just wanted to let you know I really love your playstyle. Thank you. And definitely inspires me to be a lot more clean and efficient with my builds. Thank you so much. High praise indeed. And welcome back. Thanks for hanging out. What? There we go. So somewhere here I want to put a splitter. I guess it has to go here. And we're just going to filter off ballistic shielding data. And I might just change these to blacklist scrap. a bit simpler. And then we put this here. And can we fit our scrap output here, I wonder? Does this do scrap as well? It does. I think Oh, we can definitely go further. Well, I was going to say we could go further to the left, but... If I show you my builds, you would have a heart attack. <laughs> oh no. So I could obviously use long arms or something on the outside to get rid of the scrap. It's a bit over two per second for each machine. Less than one belt. Um, we could have... Maybe? Okay, plan A question mark. Scrap. Output can go here. Um, otherwise we'll put it over here somewhere. How get the cards from the other side to the output? The cards are going back onto the sushi belt. Oh, and we could maybe... Well, they both have the same junk outputs. Contaminated cosmic water and scrap. So, I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. Um, but I was thinking... We could have... Um, fluid output like so. Oh, 
over here would be a problem. It could go back this way. Fluid throughput's going to be quite slow, right? Or contaminated cosmic water per second. I don't think that's going to be a problem. D hopes good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Dangan, as well. They need to change something at the storage box. Storage box. Which storage box? So we could... Oh man, that doesn't quite reach. How about a 3B on this side? And this will be a bit different. Perhaps. Well, up here we can definitely go this way. Not too bad. We'll see if we can't do something a bit neater. By having the scrap station somewhere else. Where the hell am I gonna do the scrap output if I if I put this so close over here? I don't think we'll do the output here. just find uh, have an easy time fitting it over here somewhere I don't see them at the start of the sushi belt how are the left machines outputting cards uh, they're all outputting cards onto the sushi belt oh I see what you mean um, that's easy enough whoops <laughs> we're just gonna spit the data cards straight back onto the sushi belt. Like that. Cool. So that reaches across here, that's fine. Save. Not now bitter. Oh, these don't need to be like bi-directional now. Bring it back to how it was. That one's gonna be a bit of a problem. I could move this down a tile. And problem solved. It's very cozy here. The whole build is very cozy. Literally don't have a literally don't have a tile to spare vertically, unless it's going to be a bit more of a mess. All right. Um, so this is going to go here, and here, and how many tiles is this? 14. Um, I can't use a 15 like that. If we do two sevens, then we need a one here. If we do... this is eight. That doesn't fit very neatly. 
I guess we do double seven and one. It's not the worst. It's pretty tidy, actually. And then we don't have to do the same on the opposite side. Uh, we could probably put that further away because we need a output belt for scrap. And it's really not going to be very difficult. Even a regular long arm inserter would keep up. Where do I want to Put it there. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Just for the consistency. And then squeeze this through here. I think I want to go there actually. Wait, where am I going to do the scrap output? I kind of want the main output of this build to go here. Which leaves this area for scrap. Which means... Is this one going to get a bit too cozy? We can, we can bring it in a bit. Shouldn't be a problem. T-Hacks is out here doing a Japanese-Italian fusion. <laughs> Indeed. 100% threat planets ain't worth conquering. This is taking far too long, even with orbital nuking. Yeah, you want to set and forget with those. Uh, but even then. Meloxel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think we'll do the same... Input over here. Uh, and ACB Ninja, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's do another drop off like this. This is turning into an interesting build. And we'll do our scrap and contaminated cosmic water output or pick up up here. Probably in like this. Okay. Don't forget you're here forever. I mean, the long arm inserters, which are actually in the wrong spot. Or rather, the belt was. Now I've broken the underground pipes. One, two, three, four. You know what? I bet we could fit... I wonder. Nope. No, we can't. Not with bulk rail loaders. Okay, then. 
Let's finish this build so we can see exactly how much space we would have. Also, I should probably be doing something in our actual save, shouldn't I? This has had its requests removed for ages, and it's still not empty. How are our outposts doing? Barrel isn't saturated, which been, means it's been moving. Fantastic. Or fragment. Uh, barrel. Has been steady for an hour. Has been steady for 10 hours, actually. That's good. Because we've got so much storage space with all those um, uh, train stops. We've got, uh, let's see, 320 times 4. 640, 1,280 stacks, plus a little bit on the belt, um, at each of the core mining drills, which individually are very, very slow. So we haven't actually lost out on any barrel with all of our mucking about. Um, iridite core fragments are looking good as well, and... Uh, Immersite Cave Core Fragments are sort of all over the place. But that's actually because they're saturated a lot of the time. The core mining drills for Immersite Cave are surprisingly fast. Cool, cool, cool. Um, we should probably have our ship ready to go. Let's make sure this combinator is switched off, so we... Uh, actually, we're going to somewhere that doesn't have an anchor, but we should be extra careful anyway. Uh, let's start our spaceship journey while we continue editing. We need bigger rail intersections to make this possible. Um, yeah, there's been a couple of things. Not until I got into space. Um, but there have been a couple of things that made me wish for... Wish I'd done the rail blocks a little bigger, but overall I'm quite happy with making them a bit smaller than last time. Alright, what was our target planet again? Um, I believe it was in the Wexivis system. Spiriso? 0% threat, 5,271 radius barrel. Uh, solar is 181% in orbit. And yeah, that is going to carry us to the late game for barrel, I think. Um, but we need to go via Foenestra. So sp Spiriso? is our destination, but not before we go to Foenestra to drastically shorten the journey. Once we hit the interstellar map, uh, we'll be nowhere to be found in this area. We'll be 10,000 distance from Foenestra. And once we get to Foenestra, we'll be 10,000 distance from anywhere else. Um, and just in case, I'll save, because we've had some shenanigans happen when we were in the editor surface while our character was on a ship. Artur's Lakik, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so my idea here was use a chest to swap the recycled heavy bearings and to grab all the outputs. Um, I'll just check again. Almost. Yeah, it's not exactly almost two belts. It is a significant amount of scrap though. Much more than we get from here. Total scrap is just under two belts, though. That's actually very convenient. 
So we should be able... Let's move this up a little bit. Should be able to maybe... Uh, this one's going to have to be further up. And this one will have to be a couple of tiles further down. And this one can be in the usual spot. Cool. That's actually symmetrical. Uh, is there a universe where we put some of our inputs in this way? No, I don't think so. How fast are our inputs? On each column... 2, 4, and 16. That's not a whole lot. But... It would just be easier to do... A couple of half belts and one belt for testing packs. Um, hey, short question about bulk loaders. Are they affecting UPS? Is there a question in the mod page but not answered? And I was wondering the same. Uh, my clerk did some experiments with those. Supposedly the big containers, even if you're not really using them, uh, and whether or not you limit them uh, do have an impact. But especially for complicated stuff like this, compared to the way I was doing it last playthrough, with like, uh, let's see, 24 or 48 stack filter inserters and a, con a, a mathematical combinator and different math for every single combinator. I think the circuit logic was adding up far more than whatever this costs us. At least you can change max inventory in options. Oh, true. Okay. Um, so we're just going to do... Actually, could I? No, never mind. Let's do this for our inputs. That should be pretty tidy. Can that belt uh, underground pipe rather reach further? Yes, it can. I might end up moving this over a bit. Oh. Looking good, actually. Let's borrow this. Very, very neat. Yeah, I'll definitely move this over. I don't like this sticking out into this half of the block. I could move the whole thing over two tiles without bumping into this. Hmm. This could use some undergrounds, I suppose. That'll be fine. And maybe we could line it up with this stuff. Let's see. Material testing pack, blank, heavy bearing. Uh, with three train loads, we really don't have to worry. Don't have to do any balancing shenanigans or anything. Maybe like this instead. That's pretty tidy. And 
this one not so much. Um, it's fine. I kind of want to put the big fluid drop off here. Come to think of it, the whole block probably barely goes through lubricant. 102 per second. It is a lot faster on the left side. I don't think we desperately need two fluid drop offs. But it doesn't hurt. So we can have our lubricant this way, and this way. How many tiles is that? Nine. Two middle left side missing long inserters. Oh, true. And I kind of want this to be as close to the middle as possible. Let's just move that over and see what we can do. Preferably line that up with the bacon, uh, the power poles rather. That seems okay. If I put it there, no, I want the island substation to be in the very middle, if possible. All right, so this could be a little bit of a problem. How much cosmic, uh, sorry, contaminated cosmic water? 20 for the entire block. We really can shape this however we like. So I might move this out of the way. actually go over there now. Oh. Must have moved it down a tile. No! Um, I can remove that for a sec. That would go there. That's nice and neat. Nothing for this one being offset. And... So we're going to have... We're going to have basically two belts of scrap here that also have... Uh, friction data coming off of them. We're going to separate them this way. And then these two just become scrap belts. But we need to merge into them from over here. With our less than one belt of scrap. Um, something like this. Let's see. Oh, well, that's almost perfect. I don't suppose I can move this whole thing over one tile. It wouldn't even help that much. And 
it like this. It's actually pretty neat. Only trouble is this part. If I move the whole thing left one, it's already biased to the left side. Hmm. Hmm, I see. Wait, how much are we getting? Uh, only 8.16 friction data per second. If that's the case... And we're getting less than 70 scrap per second? Uh, why don't we just not do this? And this one will only output scrap. And all of our friction data will go here. Uh, and I was going to put a splitter here, but it's redundant if there's a splitter here. It should be fine. Actually... No, I, th I think a splitter here would actually make sense. Okay. And then this is very straightforward. Limit this to one cargo wagon. Do the usual over here. Short trains are permissible. This is going to be rip on data pick up what no shift x there we go uh and this one of course is ballistic ballistic shielding data Tech size 100, short trains are allowed, limit these two to one cargo wagon each, and then we're almost there. Don't forget to put back active pickup here. That looks right. Ride stack threshold 100, provide threshold 60k, high priority, long trains only, scrap. And also, let's make water. Let's go back to our ship. Should be at Foenestra. Fantastic. And then we go to Wexavis. We go to Spiriso. Spiriso. Orbit. And this uh, anomaly is going to say... Where is it? Position. Spatial distortion is going to count down from 10,000. Once we cover that much distance, we're back into interstellar space, but we emerge uh, right here. We have a very short trip indeed. About five minutes till we're back at orbit. Is your mod list on the profile below updated? Good question. Um, I'm actually not sure. Nis and Domene, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
to middle left side. Yes, yes, yes. All right, we need to test this. Uh, also, don't forget lube input on this side. How many tunnels is that? Seven. Beautiful. And that'll be six. I could also do a couple of threes. It'd be just as efficient, but it looks a lot chunkier. Um, okay, so... What am I going to do with... I could move this back a bit? Yeah. That doesn't quite work either. Um, I'll have to do something with the output fluid for that one. Actually, it's pretty easy. Just do this pipe a little bit differently. Cars is that five? Then have some underground through there. That's unfortunate. That's also unfortunate. Not so bad, actually. I guess. All right, so this is connected to this, is connected to this, is connected to this, and these ones. I'll just connect like that. All of those are connected. And then, because the throughput of contaminated, uh, contaminated cosmic water is quite slow, we can pretty much just make this meet wherever. And it should be enough. Okay. Let's get... I, I kind of also want to link the lubricant. And I could just not have this drop off, I guess. Might be a little bit tidier. What's our max rate? The lube, it is only a hundred. All right. Uh, don't forget our inputs over here. Once more with feeling. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, no. No, 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 no. What did we get that's wrong? I didn't filter it either. Let's just empty those belts. Very big. Okay, so on the long belt, you should do the two slow things. Uh, heavy bearing and blank data card. On the long arm inserter belt, rather. Blank data card. And this one has to be... I think it's testing pack. Are all the tanks connected to LTM? Uh, no. No, indeed they are not. Okay, testing pack. Oh, that's wrong. There we go. Alright. 
Now we go shift right, shift left. And that should be all the input we need. Except that I didn't give the lubricant yet. And the entire block comes to life. Fantastic. Alright, we are indeed getting our uh, junk outputs over here. We're getting friction data over here. Ballistic shielding data over here. Very, very nice indeed. Why don't we have lube here? Because I haven't connected it yet. That's probably why. It's probably going to be easier to connect up there. Oh, that's a good fit. But yeah, let's just line it up with the underground belts that are there. That's pretty tidy. That's real good, actually. Okay. So, how does all this work? Um, we have the inputs on the outside for uh, friction data. It gives us 50% heavy bearing, so we need to recycle those. We're using what I call a swap chest, uh, which technically maybe we should have some circuit control on. I've gone over this before. It looks like when we're testing it that we don't need any such thing, but I have had issues with it. I guess I would have to do a superior long filter inserter because that's Um, that's the only one that we can put a filter on that's a long arm. So basically we're just going to say, if there's already heavy girders, oh sorry, um, heavy bearing in here, don't pick it up. And I can just say set filters blacklist so it can still pick up blank data cards. A little bit hard to spot against the background of scaffolding. The wiring reaching across here looks a little tacky, but what are you going to do? You could put the inputs and the outputs both on the same side, I suppose. Alright, so then we've got filtered output with the loaders here. Everything except for heavy bearing. So the heavy bearings stay here. Um, and obviously get consumed. Every other solid output goes down the belt. And we eventually uh, don't let the friction data go out through here. Just filter it off this way. And then for this one, we have a lovely standard sushi setup for, um, what are they called? Pistol magazines. We're just doing the output on the outside. Very straightforward. But for the input, we get our four half belts, run it through a splitter. That gives us one to one to one to one for everything coming through here, assuming these are saturated. Uh, we then run it through this contraption, which takes in one belt. Uh, it's a little hard to see if you don't know what this is, if you're newer to the game, but basically what's happening here is by setting a filter for something that's never going to be on the belt, we're forbidding items to be output on this side. So all of this is going to be filtered through one bit of belt. And then we're going to do a 50-50 output. 50% is going to get recycled 
and it's going to get recycled with priority. So when this is saturated, the input belt here is going to get slowed down to let this stuff go through. And that's going to result in 50% of a normal belt throughput coming out this way. Uh, so therefore we've now got one to one to one to one, and only half the belt uh, space is used up. Therefore we've got room to just output our heavy girders, well everything actually. Uh, everything except for scrap, we're not putting scrap on the sushi belt. Um, but heavy girders and iridium plate which get recycled go back onto the sushi belt. So do ballistic shielding data cards, and they just get filtered out here. Uh, and as for the ones that are going back up this way, they'll find their way back onto the belt here, as you can see. And the rest of it's pretty straightforward. Scrap output belt sneaks its way over through here, merges back into this and that's it. Are belts stopping if not saturated for the sushi? No. Uh, it's very important that we recycle. Um, even if you've got... Let's see. Uh, I believe this recipe is about the same as in vanilla for engines. Uh, this one's kind of close. Two, two, and two. Engines in vanilla are like... Iron gear... Iron plate and pipe? Or is it iron gear, steel, and pipe or something? It's two pipe, iron gear, and something, right? So, I used to try having a belt which would be a pipe on one side and on the other side we would get 50-50 um, how do I do that contraption again? We merge this. So let's say we have gear and we have plate. Um, it has to keep flowing in order to, for this to become 50-50. Uh, if you don't recycle this, even if uh, maybe it would work if you only have one machine, or maybe even just two, but... What does this take? No. Oh. Let's, let's do this recipe, one to one to one. So we need engines over here. Or motors, rather. Uh, so even if you're providing it with the perfect ratio, yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious vanilla, killer. it's gear pipe steel? I thought so. God damn it, it's been a while. Alright. Let's get some power over here. Even if you're supplying it with the perfect ratio, uh, sooner or later... What happens is, because the inserters take things in weird patterns, and because it tries to supply three times what each machine needs uh, to start a recipe, um, basically the, the longer the belt gets, the more you see stuff like this, and eventually this inserter can't pick up gears, I don't think. Oh, now it can. Um, Remind yourself that but sooner or later it's not going to be able to. Insidious killer. Overconfidence is indeed a slow and insidious killer. Why are we reminding ourselves? 
Got it, because you recycle, it's okay if one is missing for a minute. Yes, very much so. Um, if one of these is missing for a bit, it's absolutely not going to be okay. That's another problem with not recycling this. Game over, indeed. The Mr. Tomato Man? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I've also done a bunch of stuff here with, like, circuit logic that would count how much we're putting in. It, it takes, like, more combinators than you want to use uh, for each one of these. Um, actually, let me think about this for a sec. What if we go decide a combinator... I remember a speedrunner had a build for tier 1 speed modules in vanilla, which do not look like this. Um, or it was something that required one speed module and one of something else. Like rocket control units or something. A very clever little memory cell thing to make sure inserter would only put in the bare minimum for a recipe. I'll see you. Yes. I think it was. Uh, I don't know if we could do it for three things or not. Maybe if we do a filter inserter? If we do filter... Set filters blacklist. Memory cell. Um... We want it to reset when three different things equal two. Hmm. If each less than two, I don't know if that's going to work. I'll put each input count, read hand contents pulse, set filters blacklist. Uh, and we need to like reset this. So, that's all set to one each. There we go. One, two, three. Uh... Oh, right. That doesn't work. Not when we need two of everything. Um, but maybe you could do that for uh, engines. But I'm pretty sure you'd still end up with, like, problems here eventually. Just based on my own experiments before. Because I've actually spent quite a lot of time trying to make that work. But yeah, this is uh, pretty succinct. I've obviously gotten a little bit better at the circuits. Um, this would be something like... Well, each less than one wouldn't work because it would reset as soon as something was equal to one. Oh, right. You can read the output. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, condition would be something like multi-cylinder engine. Multi-C is equal to zero. And we're going to read from this one as well. Read hand contents pulse. Output everything input count. Reset all this. And... What do we get? Uh, doesn't work because we're setting filters blacklist, obviously. But if it was one each for everything, um, I think that would work. What do we need? Multi-cylinder. Yeah, that'd work for the vanilla engines. I also played around with doing different inputs on timers, like setting the filters so every one of these would try to pick up gear at the same time. Alright, let's get back to the game. I am in Arthos. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Cabin, good to see you again. 
What was that? Ephraims has that on RCU. Yeah, that's probably where I saw it. It was very succinct. The speedrunner that... I don't know if it was Nephrims or not. The speedrunner that was using it didn't actually understand it, but... Um, uh, it, I don't want to say it's not that hard to understand. It's one of those things that... If you've reached a certain level with circuits, it's not hard to understand. It's basically... How counterintuitive um, memory cells are in Factorio. If you can look at wire transmits data instantly, and Combinator takes one tick to take input and then output something, uh, and then you can understand that a memory cell is data going around in a circle, a very small circle, then you can look at that build and say, aha makes sense. There are going to be rocks in the way, aren't there? Spiriso. Indeed, there are going to be rocks in the way of the space elevator, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know what I didn't bring? There's one rock in the way. You know what I didn't bring? A way to get down to the planet. I think. Oh, no. If I just brought a space capsule... Is it in here? I don't think so. Womp womp, indeed. Link for YouTube where he is setting this up. You'd also have to change insert a stack size back to one as well, since speedrunners don't get stack size Remind upgrades. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious hmm. killer. Overconfidence is indeed a slow and insidious killer. Um, if I had some way to bombard the planet, I could kill that damn rock. Could we just pretend that this is centered? Is that okay? Will you guys, will you guys ever forgive me? Um, I don't suppose if that's placed as a ghost, it's going to show where it is in orbit. Um, okay, so where is zero zero? in orbit here. GPS equals zero zero spiriso orbit. Nope. Put the SE down, go down and pick up the rock, then move the SE. Move the S wait, you just gave me an idea. I don't know if that's what you meant. But I, I have a, a long shot a thought. Pick her dollies to the rescue. Get out of here, Rock. Tehran 45 nuke, Tehran 45 nuke. Damsel, thank you very much for the six months. Thank you so much. Cheetah, indeed. All right, so... Can't use solar beam kill it? I don't have solar beams yet. Huge hacks, indeed. Bidrith, good to see you again also. Alright, let's look at orbit. Uh, let's look at zero, zero. Let's place our gigantic blueprint. And try to put it in the middle... That's not the middle, is it? Nope. Try again. That That's not the blueprint we're looking for. You know what I should have done? 
Uh, I bet it was possible. Not that I knew I was going to be this pedantic with the placement. Um... But I bet it would have been possible to do... That's got to be centered. Yeah. That, that's got to be centered. It is. It's probably possible with Snap to Grid Absolute to make this want to go to zero, zero. Alright, now we know where we can anchor... That's cheating 100, and I love it. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. I suppose we're going to have a bit of space rock here, but I, I can live with it. All right, we need some construction bot. Actually, no, we don't yet. Um, it's going to be much better. I didn't mean to do that. Much more efficient with the way bots are if we place a bunch of this manually. And if we leave any holes, we'll let the bots fill those. Thank you, single Logibot. Been hanging out with Mike too much? Actually, I was thinking since the other day when we were all on Twitch at the same time, which used to be too early for me, but I have to I have to be awake when the temperature is not seven hundred thousand degrees. Maybe we could do a little bit of collab stuff. I should make more room in my inventory. Um, let's borrow this inventory space here. No, let's turn off our personal requests. And just shovel that in there for now. We should. I wish I could be asleep during the heat. It was 37 here. Nasty. Yeah, it was supposed to peak at 38 here today, but it's closer to 40. 39.6 last I checked. It's down to 34.4 degrees. Ah, so chilly. It's only 8 p.m. zero celsius here in germany honestly i kind of hate the cold but currently zero celsius makes me jealous not gonna lie i'm honestly kind of surprised how well i've adapted to the heat lately Not that I would like it to continue. Whoop. And that's about to run out. It's 50 Franken units right now, which is actually freezing for where I live. It rained here today and it's cold. I've been desperately wanting it to rain lately. I'm jealous. 
4.5 here in England. Marvelous clear early spring day. I only know freedom units. That's about to run out, isn't it? No, nope, not as quickly as I thought. Um, what? Oh, we still have scaffolding here. I was gonna say, this is all measured. It shouldn't be a problem. Fantastic. I'm pretty sure the bots would try to place the scaffolding here, but then they'll give up. I kind of want to see it. There's not that much left. Ah, stop. No. And... Go. Okay. Yep. They try to place it and then bring it back. Make sure we don't miss any tiles. Oh, there's like one. Well, oh, here it is. One sneaky tile. Told me how much 40 was, and from playing Oni, I know 40 is hot as well. <laughs> Yeah, 40 is not pleasant. I mean, put it this way, water boils at about 100. Uh, I was going to place the solar panels, but... It's going to be a lot easier if we can just... Place all the floor tiles first and then do the blueprint. Kind of a tease how close this is to being nice and neat, but it still has significant little imperfections like that. Oh, I've still got more scaffolding left over than I expected. Hence it would have been very surprising if I'd run out. Oh, careful. I just want to get it to the point where the bots can finish the rest pretty easily. How much am I carrying? Uh, quite a lot. Alright. Looking nice. Whoops. Uh, cables. Can get back in there. I remember last summer our max was like 45. Nasty. Okay, I believe that's all of our floors. And now... We can place the rest. And I'll just throw in some robot ports temporarily. Oh, that should actually be enough. Nope. Oh, I would have thought that was connected. Maybe this should be part of the blueprint. 
and I can just remove it afterwards. Alright, uh, I need to move my construction bots, but I didn't bring that many of. Oh, here we go. Auto save. And go. Off you go. And we're gonna want... Uh, maybe one more about here. Till everything's built. One media destroyed. Oh, zero out of one media is destroyed. I was going to say. That would have surprised me if we'd already shut that down. Bots, of course, like to build things in very random orders, uh, but we've already got plenty of electricity. Uh, and now comes the part where we have to go through this and change all of our settings. So what type of core fragments are we here for? Barrel? Uh, that's going to be... Core fragment barrel. Core fragment barrel. We're using this signal to detect if the ship is here without adding extra combinators. Um, we're going to need to change the filter on these to core fragment barrel. And thankfully, we can copy paste to get all of those ghosts updated. Nothing else to update on this end. This part's generic. Everything less than 40k. None of this needs updating. Everywhere we see a core fragment, we need to change it to barrel. This will need to be changed as well. This is for setting the requests on the ship's buffer chests. Uh, and this is... We are going via Foenestra. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be our room base. I'll just double check that. Eleven eighty, that's definitely Hagen Orbit. And so is that one. Moon Orbit eleven eighty. Moon Orbit eleven eighty. And I think it's only down here that we have our actual address. Which is Planet Orbit eight one six. I'm trying to very carefully double check that with my Blurry double vision as I melt in the heat. Planet Orbit 816. Uh, and we do go via the anomaly. 816, indeed. Uh, this needs to be set to central clock. I need to change this a little bit, actually. We need a decider, and I doubt this will be a problem that we have for a little while, but basically we're going to say if barrel core fragment equals zero, output everything. We need to receive the timer signal in order to send something back to central, so if barrel is saturated at home, uh, we're not going to send a request for a ship, basically. This needs to be central dispatch. 
I need to know what kind of timing we're up to. Um, let's see. This was 0 to 5, right? If time less than 5, output input count. This is outpost number 0. Outpost number 1 is uh, greater than 5, less than or equal to 10. And then uh, back at Exorion, which is number 2. Our third outpost. Greater than 10, less than or equal to 15. Uh, we're basically just going to add 5 to that. Greater than 15, less than or equal to 20. And then this is going to be set to central dispatch. Except this part changes. I should really update this blueprint so I don't have to remember these steps. Uh, this is going to be outpost number signal 3. Our fourth one. And that green signal just goes straight in here when the time comes. Change core fragment again. Change core fragment again. This one. Core fragment barrel. And the one thing that we haven't changed yet. Uh, is the offset for target left clamp when we go back. So I can actually just copy that from Exorion. Because this is home base. That doesn't change. Alright, so when anchor to target left clamp equals 13. 1 from here, 12 from here. And that'll add to the one that's by default. So target clamp is 14 if we're bringing back barrel. Which we can confirm here. 14. Cool. I think that's everything. Not too complicated. I say as I may have forgotten something. Should have a checklist for these. Uh, this part and this part I should probably update on the blueprint. In fact, why don't I update the blueprint now? Um, let's remove the temp robot bots. Grab some flat solos. I did say maybe I should have the RoboPorts in there, actually. Just help the bots to fill it out. They can't quite reach across here. Oops. If the... I don't know if Blueprint will save construction mode with K2. So we'll just do it like that, I guess. There's not many robot ports anyway. I don't really want to put RoboPorts down here because I want to be able to see what the end result is supposed to look like. It might get confusing. Okay. 
Also, if I did forget to remove these, it wouldn't actually be a problem. Uh, there's going to be some scaffolding missing. I don't think I want to use this one to update the uh, blueprint, after all. Maybe next time. That's a shame, too, because the space elevator is in the middle. We could have tried to get the snap to grid to be correct. That's probably something to do messing around in sandbox. Alright, so you've got robots. You do. Probably use some more though. Oh, you've already got 50. 50 logy bots. And this one is sorting itself out. Fantastic. We don't really need construction bots here. Is what I've said before, but then I had to physically fly out to patch some of these. But I think we're at I'm, I'm fairly confident we're at our final version now. Hope. Because otherwise I would have to have filtered... Like, I would have to have, like, three storage chests. Because I need filters on them. Because we can't have unfiltered uh, storage chests with this build. Just to have, like... Constant Combinator, Decider Combinator, Arithmetic Combinator. So the bots have a place to put those. Or I guess I could just leave construction bots in here and temporarily change these static requests to take whatever they're hovering with. Do the construction bots bring things back to the uh, requester chest, though? Let's find out real quick. Um, I'm going to put down a arithmetic combinator, I guess. There's one construction bot in this network. It is hovering. We're going to request arithmetic. And it does work. All right. Cool. In that case, uh, let's definitely leave a few construction bots behind. But then we actually have to leave some combinators behind in case we need to add some. What's the worst that could happen? We're never going to have to patch this. It's perfect. What could go wrong? Uh, but yeah, I think that's already done. Now we... I was going to say view opposite end. That's not right. We send power down. Elevator's already working. Let's ride it. Here we are. Fantastic. I'm going to need to pick up a bunch of rail. First thing I'm going to do, actually, is steal from this outpost. Did I forget to bring an umbrella? Just so we have a nice, easy parking for three trains, which should be way more trains than we ever need. Uh, did I bring an umbrella? I don't think so. Well, we're gonna have, like, literally hours to react to a CME. And this orbit is not a place where we're at. Okay. Uh, give me some rail. Fantastic. How much fuel do I have? 42. It's fine. Turn on butts. I need some train stops. 
And that'll be our first core scene right there. That seems fairly obvious. Let's make that as small as we can. Um, hmm. I should scan. I need to plan a bit. See how our rail is going to look. While we're doing that, let's grab some trains. And why do I still have four stacks of laser artillery? Alright, we need some locos. Uh, we need all of this, actually. You know what? Just, just, just give me all of it. That'll be easier. And I don't believe I blueprinted this yet. Yeah, let's get uh, let's get that train blueprinted. Can I just steal? It's schedule this way. Uh, where, where on earth did that go? Is this it? It might be. As in, we already did make it, actually. Yes, it is. We just have to change this to... Uh, what's this place called? Spiriso. I should really put that blueprint in... here. Uh, core fragment train. Unfortunately, blueprint can't include the power armor stuff. Uh, the equipment grid. But uh, that's no big. Alright, so we need... This part we can't make generic. Need to go Spirizo down, Spirizo up. And swap those out. And that's our train. And then we just do it again. Oh, that's going to be connected, I think. Yep, yep, yep. This happened before. Can I actually make that work properly? I think I did. So, was it V to disconnect? And then G to connect. Seems good. I hope that's three trains. Give them the engine upgrades which are also going to boost their fuel efficiency by a lot, not to mention speed. Don't know how necessary speed upgrades really are. Whoops. And... There we go. That's our trains. Uh, we need to start getting some batteries charged. 
We do have them in here, right? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Please. I still haven't learned from that mistake. We don't have any power packs. No. I... I don't think... I don't think there's anything I can do about this without making another trip. Baby ship to the rescue? Baby ship would get stuck in interstellar space. It, uh, it only runs off of solar power. It also wouldn't have enough Delta V, I think. And we're going to have to go back. But with Foe and Estra, it's not that bad. Relatively. We are requesting space train power packs here. So why didn't we get them? I'm guessing... Probably because we're not making enough, and the others are being put into buffer chests somewhere. That's probably why. So they're probably on the autocrafter. I think. Wait. Oh, here it is. We're stopping at 60. That's no good. Alright. Well, that'll take some time anyway. So I think we'll probably just put this down here. And that's actually a really good fit. It'll look a little strange, but it's fine. Oh no. Oh no. I really should have removed this mod by now. But I don't like to mess with the mods without making backups. Uh, we've, we've got those trees that don't count as trees. So placing blueprints doesn't remove them. Alright, that should work, but I need to reconnect this. And I think we'll do what we usually do. Actually, I could have this go here, but then... What, what is all this? Oh, I'm burning fuel. Whoops. I think it would be easier if I just do the rail like this. And be gone. You know what? Turn off for a bit for it. Get out of here, trees. Mini railgun to the rescue. way off. Alright, for starters, let's do that. Get some rail. Bigger baby ship needed? I'm kind of using the construction ship as my personal ship. I made it faster than usual. Don't think they intended the railgun to be used when laying rails, but it was. <laughs> I see what you did there. 
Um, I was actually using the impulse rifle. It's kind of like a higher rate of fire mini railgun. Um, I hope we're going to be able to... Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to trim surface. Even though the trees act like buildings. Alright. So... How about... How about this, actually? Uh, front right. Right about here. Wait, let me see this. There we go. And I think we'll go diagonal up. Well, no. Diagonal up there. That should be pretty tidy. And... Hmm. Yeah, we'll go straight through up here. Do another one of these. I suppose it's going to line up exactly the same way. It kind of does. Except for the part where... That's one off. Do a tiny little corner. And I'm probably going to go straight up here to get to the other core fragment. Uh, or core scene, rather. Let's do front left. some signals. I mean, arguably. That's definitely one way. This is two way. This is two way. Wait, no. What? Uh, is that a problem? That, that, that it's that close? I don't think so. That's two-way, that's two-way, that's one-way. That should be fine. As long as the train can go up the elevator. If not, we'll just move this over a tile, or two tiles. RF Holloway, Captain True, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Two-way, and two-way, and there isn't another, or at least so far, there's not another station up that way. So we don't need any more signals. I'm going to need to pick up more uh, bulk rail loaders. I should pick up the mining drills as well. At least one, two, three, four of them. At the moment, anyway. Or we could put the mining drills down at the end. Uh, we'll just give them power afterwards, so... 
All of that's going to be in sync. Just double check the signal in here. Should probably put that there. I'm sure we're going to go... I was going to say down this way, but maybe not. Need a little bit of landfill. We do have it. Just a little bit. Little purple bridge. Get rid of these damn logs. Can you explain Foe and Astra to me? Sure. So, as far as we're concerned, it is just a place that is equal distances to all places. By all places, I mean any destination from the interstellar map. So, when we leave our home solar system, or anywhere else for that matter, we go to the interstellar map, um, there's a surprising amount of travel time for the ships through the solar system, especially if Nalvis is your home base, for example. This is actually why I parked, I, I built our main base here at Hagen. It's the closest planet um, to the interstellar map in the starting solar system. So we leave our main base, we go to interstellar map, our destination is Foenestra. Uh, we leave the local solar system, but instead of going to the interstellar map, we go into some kind of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff, uh, wherein we have ten thousand distance to cover to get to Foenestra, and then if we leave Foenestra, no matter where we're going. We've got 10,000 distance to go back through the wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Um, and then, depending on where our destination is, we'll appear at interstellar map somewhere else, or we'll appear at the middle of an asteroid field. Nice Doctor Who reference. I think it's a good way of putting it. Wormhole, basically. It's a wormhole that's equal distances to everything. That's pretty good. And we're going to have to be able to go back. That's it. Hence the quotations. Yes. Okay. There's another drill way over there. I'll probably get it by going through this one. There's actually a drill here too. And since this is all going to be one big one-way sector, or two-way, we're not going to have any more signals over here. Otherwise, one train will block another. The individual drills, uh, once again, are going to be quite slow. So we don't have to worry too much about the train traffic. And I might... I might do this one this way. So that we can continue on. to the next station. Something like this. Whoop. We're using front left a lot. 
most of the stations we use the front versions. Perfect. Actually, like these uh, desolate areas because there's none of those trees. All right. I guess let's head over this way. I don't think we need bots for this unless we run into a rock. This will be faster. Pro speed run strats. Oh, is that? Oh no. Um. Might have to change this one a little bit. How about... Kind of like this. Just use some... Blue undergrounds. I'm down here. And then that's still too close. Uh, alright. I see how it is. Maybe I should just change the design entirely. Yeah, let's do that. Especially since we only have ghosts. Um, it's never too early to scrap the design. Alright, so this is going to be on this side. To make sure we have room, we'll do back left. Back right, rather. Then corner. I said corner. Fantastic. And up we go. And I think the bots just left me to break some rocks. They'll be back. Well, they are back already. Uh, where are we connecting to this? Good fit. Where's my corner? It's my inventory. Oh, it is. But stop. Halt and Z. Much better. Oh. How many drills do I have? Two. Where's the other one? Oh, there's three on this planet already. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. 50%. So... We're getting 8.6495 per drill. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, although it won't be as good when we add more drills. I think it's still going to be kind of decent. I think we'll grab these two. Just have that rail go straight down. We'll need some more landfill, but... We are picking up copious amounts of stone. I didn't actually bring landfill. Didn't realize I'd need that much. Oh hey, we should check on energy 3. We're 8 short? What? 
Wait, what? Because they're in the inputs somewhere? No? Wait. We haven't made any... Huh? We're 16 comprehensive energy catalogs short. But we only bring 5k at a time. Each of these is 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. Uh... And... And we're only short of one resource right now, so... So it should literally just have... been... What? How? How are we four items short? I mean eight, I mean sixteen. What? That's so weird. I, I really couldn't guess what's going on there. Um, but why don't we have more con- Oh, really? Is that the entire reason that we don't have uh, energy three by now? Forgot to tell this. Forgot to tell LTN to pick up the negative ten degree thermo fluid. All right, that's gonna get done pretty quick. We're looking for about seven or eight stacks. At 4.28 per second. Uh, about 93 seconds, really. Less than two minutes. It should literally be less than two minutes before we make our first um, energy three signs. Fantastic. Okay. How do I want to get that drill? Keep going from there? That might be good. Instead of going from this way. Oh, my power sucks. Let's get rid of the life support for now. And... Uh, make me some more landfill. A little bit of stone. Fantastic. Um, let's not fly around aimlessly. Oops. Is this SE 0.5 or 0.6? It is 0.6. One way, one way, two way. And down we go. Looking more at the map, but I hope we're not running into those trees. Yes, we are. Unfortunate. Uh, that's going to be an easy fit. How about here, maybe? Yeah, let's do it that way. Uh, we do have room for a corner here, right? Yeah, we do. It's perfect, actually. Alright, down we go. Zaxxon, if I didn't say so. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Icus, welcome also. Doctor Who was always good. Fantastic. How many of those uh, batteries have we got back here? Yeah, 
It's getting there. Probably if I left now, we'd have about as many as I'm looking for. Wait, how many are we requesting? Three sixty. That's not that much. I just finished it like two months ago, but never even dealt with core mining, to be honest. Not sure if this was a mistake. Well, core mining is slower, and there's more stuff to deal with, with all of the side outputs from core mining. And you're going to have to uh, trash items that come from core mining to keep core mining going. Unless you are using and storing literally everything. Uh, but it is an infinite source. And the density of stuff that you bring back with core fragments is still better than you'd think once you... Once you look at, like, all of the production steps involved and productivity bonuses and stuff. And the fact that you're bringing fluids back in a solid. Um, but, I mean, there are obvious downsides to it. But one of the reasons that I really like using coal mining, apart from the fact that I hate making what I call temporary mines... Especially in such a long playthrough, having to remake mines like this over and 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 over. Um, it's really nice to just set it up so that you can set and forget. You know, it's a game about automation. Let's, uh, let's automate. I'm going to need a lot more stone for landfill. Maybe I should just go back and get landfill as well with the construction ship. That's probably a good idea. We should still have quite a few. We'll see how many slots we've got left when we get there. Did you play SE before? Yes, I played 3.5 without Prestorio 2. So I think I want, um, a behindy, kind of like this. How about, how about just here? And then diagonal down this way. Until we get over here. Uh, that's going to be front right. So something like this. Nabbit. Diagonal's a bit awkward to place sometimes. Oh. Um, and I'm sure we can make this bit of rail here work. Definitely should be able to scrounge up enough landfill. For that little pond there. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, that's enough. That was way closer than I thought it would be. Did you finish the late quiz? Quiz? Do you mean the burbulator? Oh, I need more rail. 
back we go for real. It's going to be so nice not being shot off barrel anymore. Oh, and we should be seeing... Um, yes, indeed. Energy 3. There it is. We've already got 162. And I believe I've got these configured to deliver one stack at a time for the moment. Just because we want results before we make 10,000 with our current rate of production. Uh, what should we research though? With energy 3 but not material 3? Well, we're going to need this. Quantum processor. May as well get it out of the way. Oh, I was going back for rail, wasn't I? And... Uh, that's fine, I guess. I don't know the name, the big ring. Uh, no, I got, frankly, a bit sick of that puzzle. I feel like that's a charitable description. It was a lot of guess and check, and it took really, really, really long to make a guess uh, with the UPS as it was by then. And there were, like, no leads. Like, there was basically nothing to go by. Someone gave a hint that it was supposed to be, like... What if an alien species didn't have numbers? But then... Actually, no, those are just numbers. Those symbols are just numbers. Apparently. Maybe it's a code breaker's wet dream, but not mine. I missed... well, I didn't exactly miss it, but I think we'll go down the same rail to get the, that drill. These two are going to be fairly obvious, I think. They're so close together, but not quite lined up, though. Um... Probably on the right. Front right. Something like this. And rail keep going. And I'll probably just put another one like that. So how many drills is this so far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, maybe 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, we can probably stop scanning now. Uh, this is getting into diminishing returns. I don't want to make the area that we keep scanned too big. doop a doop fantastic. Uh, what else should we research? Shield generator mark 3. 
Uh, honestly, I don't know if they've been patched at all, but I found the shields incredibly disappointing last playthrough. Uh, they drain energy and hit points really, really, really aggressively if you move at speed at all. Um, which I think is just absolutely horrible. Uh, quantum computer, absolutely. Let's get that knocked out. And we'll unlock energy four. So we'll have the data cards to build that, whether we're ready or not. Fantastic. Oh, what about laser da uh, damage? Energy weapon damage. We are... Missing this prereq. We can now make faster, but that's kind of expensive. We'll wait a little bit on that one. Um, but where's my energy weapon damage? What else do I need? Oh no, I need energy beaming, which means I need material three. Before we can upgrade the laser turrets. That's a little bit unfortunate. Okay. Let's just keep knocking off prereqs. And I think it's about time we go back. Or maybe landfill. You know what, I should place as much as I can first. Because this is going to be more rail than usual. I'm pretty sure we can get the landfill done. Um, while we're on planet. You know what? I kind of want to jump into editor. And... What, why are you like this? And we'll do... Real like... This. And then... Tiles water and blueprint that so that we need uh, the absolute minimum of landfill oh. chuck that in here for now And then that can go pretty much wherever we like. Actually, I kind of want to make sure. Oh. I should probably go back and get train stops. Uh, I guess we could start our hockey stick here. I should also... Grab this as a blueprint, I suppose. Where did I put it? It's kind of hard to see. Actually, no, I do want to use that blueprint for Snap 2. I don't want to make mistakes with this. There it is. Oh, so how much do we need? Uh, how boosts? 246, which is 12,300 stone, um, which might not be that hard to pick up actually, except I'm going to pick up a whole bunch of coal. Hmm, maybe I should just go back for the landfill. 
uh, we've planned this out at least. Um, I think we'll continue our rail down this way. And like so. And... Where are we going? Like so. Go place that. You know, I probably would make the landfill that way, except for the amount of coal that we're going to pick up. Watch out for my solid rocket fuel, otherwise we're going to have a big walk of shame. I do have a stack of iron, so we could make the uh, fuel machine. to go get back and get blue belts as well. Okay. We're almost like halfway done designing this though. I would like to get these mines, uh, these drills going before I leave. So that the barrel will actually be flowing. With all the excess power we have, if we're going to stop there with the trim surface, it'd kind of be a waste not to go get this as well. Alright, first... I hope we brought enough blue belt as well. Well, we're, we're going to be making an extra trip anyway. Let's put this here. I like this better. Even find my corners. There we go. And two way, and a two way. What is the math on the amount of core mining drills? Is more always better? It's diminishing returns, and it's power of two. So basically. The first core mining drill, depending on the radius of the planet and the type of core fragments, gives you X amount of core mining drills. Uh, sorry, X amount of core fragments per second. Uh, to get double that, you need 2 to the power of 2. So you've got 1 to the power of 2, which is 1 uh, core mining drill to start with. 
to double that you need 2 to the power of 2. Uh, to get 3 times that you need 3 to the power of 2, 4 to the power of 2, and so on. So you need 16 drills to get the equivalent of the first drill 4 times. You need 25 to get the equivalent of 5 of the first drill. Um, and with how SE.6 is, you can't just put core drills wherever you want. Um, if you don't want a save game that is 600 gigabytes, uh, it's only so worth expanding out further and further to get more drills, even though we are getting plenty of electricity uh, from the solar panels up here. We've got 1.6 gigawatt. The core mining drills don't take nearly as much. They, they actually take half the electricity they used to. Um, they take 25 megawatt each. So more is always better, but just marginal gains. Yeah, it's really not worth it sooner or later. I would say somewhere around uh, 16 to 25 drills. Um, it's not really worth adding more even with how cheap they are now, and with the electricity from the uh, space elevator. Only upgrade if you're able to do that power of two. Indeed. Just trim after building all to decrease the size. Yeah, but the trim only gives you a square or rectangle. Um, it's not like all of this area is going to get blacked out. Um, I was going to have rail go this way, but maybe we should just extend this one. Perhaps. Something like this. And... Down we go, and then probably front left, which is this one actually, and we'll do it this way again. Oops. Then this goes here. Luckily we're not running into many of those trees. Stupid faux tree on that other core. Faux tree. Trims to XY to negative X negative Y. The furthest thing. Yep, feels bad. I wish resource locator mod worked with coal mines. Uh, do you mean the search factory or is that a different one? The barrel core fragments, for some reason, don't get found, but we can actually search tags. So, thankfully, we've got these core seam tags everywhere, and we can very clearly see that we've found 20 core drills by looking this far, and we can find where they are. On the up slash down, there's a tree, indeed. Alright, I think I'll take a little break shortly. I desperately need to cool off and get a snack. Resource locator mod gives you this conveyor-like item that lets you push resource nodes. Oh no, like pick a dollies, but for 
for things like core seams. Uh, so these three, one, two, three, four actually, are all just going to be on the same bit of signaling. Um, but with how slow the drills will be individually, that's really not a problem. Especially with how fast our trains are. I would just drag these out myself to do it faster, but the occasional rock is going to stop me. I'm going to need to come back here with power poles and belts and stuff anyway. Um, but if I plan it all out, I can at least check how much we need of everything. Okay, how many more drills? One, uh, two... Three, four. Four drills that we haven't planned out yet. Uh, but I'm definitely going to take a little break there. It's harder to use than I thought. Not to explain, the mod will move core seam, but the seam becomes inoperable afterwards. That doesn't seem very good. How's our science doing? Uh, unsurprisingly, we're waiting on energy three, which is waiting on what exactly? What? We're not picking up energy three? No. No, we've got energy three here. Um, so what are we short on? Energy one? Is that what we don't have right now? Really? Yeah, it's energy one. Hmm. Fascinating. Well, we are making energy one in any case. All right, let's do a little words on stream once more. And I'll come back a little bit more chilled out, literally. Seems like a good way to push seams to the core of the planet afterwards, so to stop save files from becoming massive. Yeah, let's see that. Uh, 20V, thank you for the follow, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Alright, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds, I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Fantastic. One more, we'll be back to it shortly. Okay, let's continue, shall we? Pause the old words on stream. Nicely done. And uh, sure enough, we're getting pretty low on rail. Um, might have actually had to make another trip just for that. Although I do have a stack of steel ingots. I could make some amount of rail... Uh, let's see, steel beam is two plate, so one plate, one rail, um, and steel ingot contains how many plate? Uh, ten, so we've got 500, we've only got 500 steel plate, yeah, we could turn that into 500, um, rail, that's not that much. Mid Jaggers and Koha, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, uh, but let's just build and plan out as much as we reasonably can um, before we go back. And I think. I think, I think we'll put frail down this way. Something like this. And this. Um, over here, and then corner go here, and if we do it like that, we'll have rail also go straight through this way, I think, and bend down here. Okay, um, 
front right. Seems good. Up we go. And... Add some signals before we forget. Actually, I can't really see properly where those would fit. It's probably fine. Don't forget these ones. Alright, let's see how much rail we have left at the end of this. Actually, can I pick a dolly's these? Nope. I probably tried that before. At least we were able to pick a dolly's that rock. If I had to make an extra trip for that before we even built anything, I would have been sad. I think we're going to run out of rail sooner than I even expected, actually. But I do have 12, 13, 14, 15 landfill out of our, what, 200 that we need here? Oh, that's item on ground. 240. Not that much to pick up from base, um, but considering we need a whole stack of something or other to turn into landfill, a little bit of a problem right now. Oh, and I forgot to actually design where this station was going to go, but it's fairly obvious. Um, I think we'll do back left, and therefore put this up here. Right about there. That should be neat enough. Fantastic. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't need the bots for this bit. We can do that faster. Missing a splitter of all things. We really are out of splitters. Holy crap. Okay. So we're pretty much running out of everything. The cargo rocket has done cargo rocket things. That'll be on Hagen. And where our bots can deal with it. No big deal. It's fine. We're phasing cargo rockets out anyway. Uh, if I get time, I might put the cargo rockets out of their misery off stream before Factorio next week. Replace all of the spaghetti mess on our old outposts with this lovely neat stuff. And maybe I'll add a couple more spaceships, but I won't advance science or anything. Or we'll make new outposts off stream. 
Um... There's a lot I should do before I take a trip. But I don't want to. I'm just going to put some stuff in chests. Before we go. Make sure we have an excess of it when we come back. Stops the vanilla style bulk rail loaders. I think those will probably be fine though. Uh, signals, sure. What little landfill I made. I think that's about it. Okay. Let's head back to Foenestra. Uh, and we'll head back to Hagen Orbit from there. Onward to the negative space wedgie. And let's do some designing. Oh, uh, speaking of designing, I never actually blueprinted this thing that we finished. Um, let's remove the cheat inputs, make it a little bit easier when we actually make the blueprint. And get rid of the extra space platform scaffold. But we're going to want to put some of this back just so it doesn't look quite so tacky. And up here as well, I guess. This bit definitely looks a bit sketch. Any tips for someone going into space for the first time in SE? Hmm. Uh, if it's... I don't know if it's K2 or SE.6, but if I were to start this playthrough over... Um, I definitely would have gone for tiny planets early game. Um, they gave more than I thought they would from core fragments. Uh, and liquid rocket fuel is... With K2, it, I'm pretty sure this is K2, not necessarily SE. Uh, producing liquid rocket fuel is much more of a problem. Uh, like, that's the main bottleneck in getting resources from another planet. You could consider using delivery cannon capsules, but they don't scale very well. The material cost. Um, but yeah, uh, small planet or like tiny moon means minimal liquid rocket fuel cost to get off. Uh, use the water separation recipe. Uh, with the electrolysis machines to get hydrogen and oxygen uh, as the basis for your liquid rocket fuel. And then the it, it's going to take a lot more machines and it's going to be a bit slow, but the only resource that you're going to have to supply to get so, uh, liquid rocket fuel is iron. And that would have been a much better way to get out of the not-so-early game, I think. 
This is friction data and ballistic. Friction ballistic. Friction data, ballistic data. Snap to grid 86251. Sure hope I named all those stations. Come to think of it, I don't think I did do the LTN requests at all. Well, guess we are checking all of these now anyway. Those two are fine. This one I think is done as well. Drop off stations haven't been named and haven't got requests. All right, so lubricant, 100k with a 60k request thresh, request thresh, what? I was going to say request thresh stack threshold. <laughs> Uh, 60k request threshold for the fluids, 100 stacks for the solids. And we're looking for material testing pack, heavy bearing, and blank data card. Um, and these two have a stack size of 50. 50, 100, plus 10%. Uh, I'm guessing the throughput for those inputs is slow. 8.16 per second. 32 is huge um, for the material testing packs that only have a stack size of 10. But less than a fifth of a stack of blank data cards and half of that for heavy bearings. We can just do the minimum for those two requests. Um, so that leaves how much room for material testing packs? Uh, if we can do six train loads and change, we could do like four train loads of material testing packs. Considering how, um, how quickly they're going to drain. Doing two to three. Let's make it three. So three stacks times a hundred. Does this have biters? Yes, it does, but not every surface. All right, that should be fine. So this is testing pack. Uh, bearing and blank, and lube, requester, goes into mech facility, and out comes friction data. And then over here we've got something same, same, but different. We're not doing a lubricant request on this side though. Um, it's basically the same, except heavy bearing becomes the other two iridium things, and then we add pistol. We're going to have to make that somewhere else. I kind of took that for granted. High throughput that we need for that. Actually, I should check. I'm not going to change the build now, but... Pistol Magazine. It's literally just coal and iron. And we're not going to be able to prod module that, so we may as well do it in space. Actually, we're bringing iron up as ingots, so no, I don't think it would be more stack efficient. To bring it up from the ground. Stack size 200 though. But ingots are like... 
five times more stack efficient. So yeah, make them in space. So let's see, testing pack, let's copy this. Testing pack, uh, blank data card will be after these two. Which I think heavy girders have the same stack size. And are similarly slow to be consumed. Even slower, actually. Really, really slow. Um, iridium plate stacks to 40. Um, 4,400. Iridium plate. And last but not least is pistol mag. Um, 110 times 200 is 22,000. Okay, so just to confirm... Oh, wait. I might have to not request so many material testing packs. Thankfully, we're only consuming four per second on this side. A lot slower. It's still almost half a stack per second. Um, but let's see, we've got room for five. No, six. Six train loads of stuff. Stack size 50. 300 and change. Or rather, wagon size is 50. At the stacks. Zombie Ant, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So we're looking for just a bit more than one stack, uh, one train load of these three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we've got room here as well. It's probably fine, honestly, except I don't think we do need three train loads of material testing pack if we're only consuming 0.4 of a stack per second, which is still kind of fast. But we don't need three train loads. All right, so this is... Um, testing pack plus girders and iridium plate and blank that's not blank and bullets goes in uh, is requested goes into mechanical facility and outcomes ballistic data Fantastic. Now we can blueprint at last. And that is half of Material Science 3. Uh, what was it called? Friction... Friction and Ballistic Data. That's pressure. We've done pressure. Snap to grid 86251. Assuming we haven't missed any cheat items. Oh, and I should probably reposition from Foenestra. But yeah, that snap to looks good. Um, that can go there. I suppose. Here we are at Foenestra. Let's go to Hagen Orbit. Let's not auto clamp because if we're in the editor, bad things could happen. 
Uh, we don't need to be in the editor right this second. Instead, let's decide where our first step on material 3 is going to go. And I think the answer is about here. Material testing packs are here. I'd like to have them really close to the material testing pack. Yeah, let's do it here. And let's grab our scaffolding train. Wait here until uh, inactivity. Construction train. We're going to need how many mech facilities? Uh, 24. Twenty-four mech facilities. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That's going to be fifteen. Oh no, that stacks to five. Fantastic. All right, park yourself over here. Wait for inactivity. And as soon as the scaffolding has all been placed. We can click here, no shift, just click, otherwise we don't know what we're missing. There we go, just in time. It's a lot of belt, we might have to make two trips. So, after we've resupplied, come back here just for good measure, and let me just double check. LTN is... the wires have been done. Seems good. Beautiful. I haven't actually done the Astro 3 catalog, or oh, sorry, uh, Material 3 and 4 catalog, but basically it's just a copy-paste edit of this with different thermofluid temp input um, and different data cards but it's the same ratios and everything so depending on the builds um, it'll be here or like here and here that we do the other material three what's our eta only one minute 14. All right. So we've done these two. That leaves... Why doesn't this have a recipe? I believe it was radiation shielding data. To make... Material 3, yes. And that's the only thing it's used for. Radiation shielding data, recycles uranium-235, and iridium, so we're going to do a swap chest, I think. Um, seems like it's going to go through testing packs relatively quickly, and only one blank data card per shielding data, and then we have to deal with contaminated scrap. As for... Explosion shielding data. Um, it's looking like more or less the same thing. In fact, it is the same thing with different stuff. 10 seconds, 4111. The blank to useful data card ratio is the same. Um, instead of 75%. Iridium plate, we get 50. 
We get 50% heavy girder instead of 50% uranium. Uh, we get four testing packs in in the same amount of time. And we also we produce scrap instead of contaminated scrap. Do these both only go into Catalog 3? They do. So I think we'll build these next to each other. And it's going to be a perfectly symmetrical build. Maybe even right down to the amount of scrap that we get. Uh, nope, contaminated scrap is going to be slow, a lot slower. It's fine. Alright, uh, let me just put this here and this here. In case I need a reminder. Alright, time to anchor. That was quick. We maybe don't need that much. Solid rocket fuel, but we do need land fill. I didn't assume that we had some, but I'm surprised we have exactly zero. I'm going to go pick some up directly. And what was the other thing? Oh. Uh, this should have a space capsule. Because if I wasn't able to use picket dollies to move that rock, uh, that would have been a problem. Apparently I need to go downstairs for the space capsule. Or I could steal it from, like, here. Or not. Alright. So we're looking for a space capsule or two, uh, and some landfill to bring back up. Up we go. I know exactly where I've got some landfill lying around. Oh, no I don't, evidently. Um, wasn't I converting excess sand into landfill somewhere? Oh, here it is. Stone into landfill. Before we get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is stone that comes from core mining. I don't trash anything that comes from a finite source. Alright, that is quite a bit of landfill. Uh, in fact, I should take a bunch of it to orbit. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure there's no um, prod bonuses for landfill, are there? So I could just make it in orbit. Yeah. I mean, sand and water might be more efficient. Almost forgot the space capsule. Um, this one. And I guess that'll do for now. Not going to need any regular rail signals. Not with the way I do the rail layout. Get this out of here. Okay.
Back we go. Oops. Brain is malfunctioning. Up we go. Actually, I should check on how our resource flow has been. As soon as I get this done. Alright. Moth is trying to get itself squished by my mouse. Careful, Moth. Uh, ingots are a pretty good indicator. I see a couple of dips there, but basically we have been making... Ooh, last 15 minutes, not so... not, not as good for barrel. How about core fragments for barrel? Core fragments are very, very good, actually. Um, did we already start drilling on the new outpost? No, there's no electricity here. Huh. So that, that change, where it's suddenly so much more consistent. Oh, this is hours. That was like 13 hours ago. Okay, yeah, that does make sense. Uh, but yeah, it has been continuously moving. Presumably we are... Nice, nice, nice. There's two haulers taking barrel core fragments right now. Um... So we're just waiting on the train, the next train to bring core fragments to this side. Cool, cool, cool. So we're not bottlenecked on the spaceships, that's the important thing. Um, I'd also like to confirm that we're getting the other two. What's this? Erudite. And also Erudite. And I thought there was a ship there. Um, are we saturated for the purple stuff still? Yeah, we are. Cool. So this is saturated. We see ships bringing back erudite. We see ships bringing back barrel. And it looks like... Looks like we're keeping those, uh... Actually, Iridite might be a bit slow now. Let's check. I want to look at consumption for Iridite core fragments. Pretty consistent, I guess. Yep, seems to be doing fine. More spaceships will make it more reliable as well, more throughput. Speaking of which, we have enough to make a spaceship right now. Barely any production? Oh no. Oh no. I think I will make a spaceship before we go. Um, did this get built? It did not. Do I have any speed threes up here? I have plenty. Should have brought more blue belt from downstairs, but it's probably fine. I did automate it up here. So I'm going over here to drop modules. Why didn't the construction train have a storehouse? because it wasn't asking for it. And do I have my B 
beacons. Yes. Uh, probably not enough speed modules. Why are they all in here? Oh, I remember. Alright, and let's see if we can't make a spaceship on the same trip. and red. Fantastic. Um, I also need two of these and one of these. Uh, and I will need the construction train because I just realized there's like a couple of, well there's a few pieces of space pipe various lengths and shapes. But first, we'll do the simple thing so that we don't have to remember. And apparently we still need more belt here after two trips. Oh, this thing's still getting refilled. Okie dokie. Oh, oh, it's just straight up still getting refilled. It hasn't done that second trip. Damn. That's rough. Um, alright, so we can probably consider this finished. Probably. There's at least a 70% chance that no further action is needed from us here. Um, which drop-off is this? Barrel. How many ships are coming back with Barrel? Oh, we've got time, I think, even if this one has Barrel, which it doesn't. All right. Iron hauler. Good. And construction train. Well, I was going to get the construction train to join us here, but... Huh. Did we not have door on the other end of our... haulers? That's weird. I thought they had doors on both sides. Okay. So what are we missing here? More mechanical facilities, which we really don't need right now. And that's it. That is it. Wait, where's the S equals zero? Oh, we're still trying to load space rail. Oh, no. Too much belt manufacturing or something. Alright, let's try getting that finished. And then visit a spaceship up here. Wait for me. And start this thing warming up. Fantastic. Oh yeah, we also need the construction ship for all of these buffer chests. Uh, did I really not bring ion engines though? Because there weren't any here. Um, I've got some spares up this way, I guess. Oh, it's already working. 
Except we don't have the bullets, obviously. Uh, this one works, it looks like. That's the more thirsty one anyway, so... Um, if there's a material shortage, it'll take longer for that one to catch up. Apparently it didn't bring the two doors that we need either. Well, we don't strictly need them. Got to keep an eye on that request. Oh. oh no. Oh no. Mm -mm. Give me this. And then give me this as well. Vote time out for bad jokes. <laughs> into the sin bin with you. The boo box. That scene gave me something like nightmares as a little kid. No, I think it did give me nightmares. Alright, are we good? I think our ship is functional now. Just waiting for orders. Uh, let's see. Doesn't have enough water. Uh, it's empty of core fragments. Bots have stopped moving. Bots have not stopped moving, actually, because we're dropping off more ice. That's fine, I guess. Water level equalize. I'm really surprised I never thought of this system to do the water last playthrough. Just keep this water container at X level and it'll equalize with the spaceship. Uh, but yeah, Shy Shark, or rather Iron Holder number 7, I think it is is on its way to get Iridium. Fantastic. Indeed, this is Iron Hauler number seven. We're getting somewhere now with scaling up. Cool. We're not going to need as many ships um, by a significant margin when we have the higher tier ones with antimatter engines and 2,000 hull stress. Is this... Oh, I left this here the whole time. My bad. You may go. And you may go. We're not going to overtake our construction train though, are we? Pumping those out, last one I saw you make was like three or four. Indeed. I think once we get to 10 or 12, um, we can safely expect to keep another type of resource, um, like another core fragment type, saturated. Alright, so we got some landfill in the ship, we got some power packs, apparently only nine? Why are there only n Oh, I remember. I remember the answer to that question. Uh, this is a buffer chest, and that, the trouble with buffer chests Really, the only trouble with buffer chests is we can't exchange with other buffer chests directly.
Uh, let's see. Same condition as this one. Filter. Discharged power pack. That's not quite right. We should just... We should just make sure that there's a few stacks in here. So no condition on this one, just set filters. I could also just take a bunch of charged ones, so we could give them to the train straight away. One third stack each. We got landfill in here, right? No? I thought I requested... Oh, was it over here? Yeah, 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 1000 landfill. This is fine. Also, that's where some of our ship stuff ended up. Alright, shall we embark? We're only trying to resupply scaffolding that we don't need at the moment. Seems good. Although I would prefer not to kidnap too many bots. That'll do, I guess. Kind of made it look like I was trying to kidnap them. Alright. So we'll be at Foenestra in less than five minutes. And then, once we get there and I change the destination, it'll be about another five. Let's do some more designing. I absolutely love that we can do this while we're in transit. Good mod is good. So we're going to make this... Oh, we can see exactly where the station's going to go. Do we output fluids? We do not. This is going to be easy. So it's uh, one desirable, one junk for both of these. And drop off. And put this in the middle, maybe bias to that direction. Space platform plating. Wait, that's not plating. Whatever, it's fine. Uh... Gonna be shaped like this. Wait, what? There's no fluid involved, but I feel like lining it up as if it was. I think this was like the first build where I hit upon the idea of using the swap chests last playthrough. So we're gonna do... Well, I could do all the inputs in the middle, to be honest. 
I'm pretty sure they're going to be that slow. Less than one iridium plate per second. Less than two uh, uranium per second. 3.12 blank data cards per second and a whopping 12.5 material testing packs. Which, to be fair, is more than a stack. Um, but that is 1, 2, 3, 4... Individually, they're quite slow, right? One per second material testing pad, yeah. So what if we had... Hmm. That has to be two towers away. We could actually have those equidistant. Uh, that doesn't really work. I was thinking about having the inputs here and then somehow doing the chest swaps as well. I could do that, I would just have to have the outputs on the outside. Is that desirable? Ooh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So for output, we're looking at 25, 28 and a bit per second. Um, significantly less than half a belt on either side. Individually, uh, about 2.3 per second. No worries whatsoever. And we can bring them all down here. And then simply filter. This will be a high priority pickup. Um, I think we will balance it. Does this look tacky? Maybe? Maybe not? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then... What is this called? Radiation shielding data. That's going to go down here. It's probably almost time to do some navigation. Uh, what's our destination called? Spiriso. Spiriso Orbit. S-O Orbit. Fantastic. And our ETA is probably going to be five minutes. Maybe slightly longer once we speed up. If you take the acceleration time into account, looks like a bit more than five minutes. All right. That's actually pretty tidy, assuming this works, which I think it does. All right, we have four inputs. Um, because testing packs are so fast, we'll ask for two train loads, I think. Everything else is really slow. And... Let's see. 
testing. Uranium. Iridium plate. And blank data card. And the usual layout. Unless... Uh, copy-paste flip's not going to cut it, because we need these to use the same sides of the belt. Might be a problem. Actually, maybe it is copy-paste flip is the way to go. Whoops. Is that one backward? No, we're good. Alright, so let's see. If that's material testing pack, right side, then we want material testing pack right side, which is this one. And this one goes here. And then... And then, and then. This will obviously need to get out of the way. Huh, is there not? I could probably just move this down a little bit. Do this again. enough. I suppose. What if instead this was moved over a little bit, then this would have to go here. I don't like that. Let's keep it like this. Or maybe like this. This kind of looks a little bit more symmetrical, even though it isn't. Alright, this goes here. Close enough. Uh, so now let's do our test inputs. So the force physical, four physical items. Nice and easy. Set filters blacklist and read from the container that you're putting into. And then shift right click, shift left click. That looks... this is... this is wrong. That is still wrong, this needs to not get flipped. All right, there we go. There we go. So we've got our inputs. And we've got uh, filtered outputs. That's weird. Why isn't this... Oh, we need long arms as well. Duh. Just as well, I need to put filtered outputs here anyway. So everything that leaves is going to go on this belt on the outside. 
radiation shielding data was it? Yes. And contaminated scrap. just need to add some long arms over here as well. How do I want that to look? Probably the usual. Something like this. Seems good. Uh, but we need to swap. I could do this blacklist, but then it would be harder to see what it's doing. So we're swapping Iridium Plate and uh, Uranium, actually. Iridium Plate. Right list. And it should work without any fancy circuitry. I think. Pretty sure. Especially since... Um, we take from... Maybe I should do stack inserters to take from the chests. We pick something up from the chests in one frame. And if we're picking up a whole stack, it's going to be taking faster than... Faster than the inserters can take from the belt. Alright, I'm hoping that'll be it. Math says... This is significantly less than half a belt. What will come from this half, or this half? As long as we put them on opposite sides of the belt, it should be fine. Fantastic. Very good. And make sure we're not accumulating. I don't think we are accumulating. Giving, making these ones stack inserters really helped as well, I think. How does the chest get priority over the belt? Two ways. First of all, when you take from a chest, uh, it snatches something up and puts it in the inserter's hand in one tick. Whereas the inserters have to struggle to pick stuff up from the belt. We go. Good to see you again. Uh, the other thing is I set the stack size much higher. We've, we've got a stack size of 12 versus 3. Um, so every time... It, let, let's say they're taking turns, which... Uh, I think they might, actually. It was definitely added to Factorio at some point. It didn't used to be the case. Where if you have... Um, Let's say a couple of machines trying to take wires. Um, it didn't used to be that these two would take turns. It used to be one had arbitrary uh, priority depending on 
position or where it was built or something. I'm not sure what. Uh, but they did start taking turns at some point. I don't know if that works with taking from a belt or not. But as long as these inserters swing sometimes, stack size of 12 is going to just empty whatever's in here. So it should, should work without circuitry help. I imagine. And if we're wrong, it's easy to fix. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same build, uh, but mirrored. And that's going to be uh, explosion shielding data. Thanks for the explanation. You're welcome. Um, all right. So we're going to put this here. Obviously, some things won't flip. Let's start with this. Get rid of the machines. Control X, flip, control. Well, not control, just click. And then this is going to go here and here and have some speed modules. And we just change the inputs. So let's see. Material testing. How, how did that get flipped around? Oh, because we literally flipped it. That's why. Material testing pack. Uh, heavy girder. Explosive. Oh, I forgot the part where this has five inputs. Oh, no. I think we can probably just do the explosive inputs from the outside. 326 per second. Are you sure? What? Also 65... 6... 65... Material... Wait, what? Did I accidentally put super speed modules in here? Is the is the machine faster? Because I'm pretty sure I looked at the recipe and it was It is, it's four times faster. Well there's that that's why. Um We've got twelve machines, I could do this with just three. And I'm pretty sure. I'll just double check again, but these two only go into the same ratio recipe. It's going to be material catalog three, comprehensive. Um, sure enough. And explosion shielding data. Yeah, they. Both only go into comprehensive, which just takes them in an equal ratio. So we absolutely should just do the same speed with these two. Um, the only unfortunate thing here is you can't have symmetry with three machines. What do you mean? What do you mean? So what's the neatest way to do this? Give it some signals. We do need a different uh, scrap drop off here.
Drop a speed upgrade? No, we don't want to increase our machine count arbitrarily. Hmm. Three machines is actually also really inconvenient for swapping between them. This is a nasty joke. How am I supposed to make it neat, make it tidy? This was going to be the perfectly symmetrical build. No. Why hast thou forsaken me? Feels like a waste having a wide area beacon for three machines, actually. Maybe we really do. Change this. Let's see, crafting speed is plus 240%. Uh, and we need a quarter. Well, no, we need... Hmm. I'm confusing myself with math. What we need is 4.08 data cards per second. I'd still only need 6 if I did this, but that's only minus 40%. 4.08. Eight machines. I guess we could do that. I suppose. Let's figure out how it's going to look. In fact, just remove that for now. Somewhat better, still slightly over, but closer range and still even, indeed. It, it, it'll have to do. Um, so I think we're still going to do this in the middle, more or less. No, 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 no. We start with this. Right. Right. Uh, and we also need explosives in. Pardon me. We do need 166, or maybe a little bit less, um, explosives per second. 4.08 is our... T Wait, this is double. What? Oh, oh, I, I see the problem. I see the problem. Problem. This would be easier. All right, rate right calc. 4.48, that's more like it. And we only need uh, two belts of explosives. Cool, cool, cool. Isn't that nice? 
Uh, everything else is relatively slow. Material testing packs for their stack size is, as always, rather fast. We need a whole belt for output for scrap. Um, and just a little bit of room for data cards. Although, since we're going to be in sync with this, maybe slowing down because of the belt doesn't matter. Two belts of explosives, though. What are the two things we're swapping? Girders and iridium plate. So we just change this to girder. That's it. I think. How fast do we consume the explosives? 11.2 per second per machine. Really? Alright. Alright, I see how it is. I see how it is. Same thing on the other side. Um, and I think we could still do the output relatively the same. With some undergrounds. Kind of sketchy looking. I feel like I should probably do a separate output belt for... for the data cards as well, though. How fast individually? 5.6 per second. Stack inserter should be fine in theory. Except we need to use opposite sides. Where are we, we right now? Uh, we have arrived. Cool, cool, cool. We'll get back to that. I want to see if I can finish this build. Before we finish today. Oh, that needs a filter. Stack, filter, inserter, nothing but scrap. Oops. No, that's right, actually. And then... Splitter. And then... Maybe I should just do this instead. That's no good, actually. Let's 
Seems okay. Um, so how am I going to do the... Where am I, where am I going to squeeze in the card output? Answer me this. That one's a bit of a problem, and now it's going to be crisscross, can't work, not the way I wanted to do it. I guess we'll just have to make a little exception here. Uh, thanks, I hate it. I don't suppose that could... yeah, it could actually. Much better. Alright. Wait, we need a filter on that, which means it has to be a superior. Uh, okay. We're looking for explosion shielding data. Explosion. Fantastic. I think that's pretty much it. Needs to be tested. Uh, we also need explosives. to find their way down here. Right, so these ones are explosives. Let's get that out of the way first. And then... Material testing pack, heavy girder, uh, Iridium plate, and then blank data card. Which, these are already set up. Except, they're backward. And then, set it up so that those line up properly. That filters blacklist. These two need to be flipped, and these two need to be flipped. That's it. I think that something's wrong. There we go. I think that's all there is to it. Seems to be working pretty well, actually. Uh, I almost didn't notice, but we don't need that last underground there. I like how there's just enough room. Well, I guess if I moved that forward, one we'd have one extra tile. Though, not if we're being consistent with where the inserters go. It's kind of just enough room for that to work. Nice. This is oddly satisfying. Why did we stop? No explosives. Oh, that's why. That's why. Um... No, that's going to mess that up. 
I'll just do it this way again. There's actually only 19 explosives in there. Fantastic. Alright. Explosives. Another nice build, but why not fully beaconed? Because these machines are four times faster than the ones on the left. And the need, like, if we did the same beacon, uh, we need three of these. Which is not symmetrical, but more importantly, we can't do swap chests. Um, so I figured for so few machines, why not just not consume 10 megawatt all the time? Um, and we'll just do one speed module, three efficiencies. That drops our power consumption down a minimum, and it's still, with eight machines, a little bit faster than 12 over here. And it's nice and symmetrical-ish. It's as good as it's going to get, anyway. Um, so scrap. Did I... I need to set that so that... We use both sides of the belt. Very good answer, thank you. That should have all of these working at full speed. Once the scrap um, catches up. Oh, this isn't going anywhere. Yeah, that might help. How much scrap is it? Just under one belt, yay. Sorry. Just under one belt. Which, considering we're using inserters to put stuff onto the belt, technically might cause problems because it's that close. But we're still like 10% ahead of how fast the uranium stuff can go. Oh, that scrap piled up quickly. Very quickly. We didn't even get one train load out of this. Probably something similar going to happen over here. Let's start tidying it up. And I'm going to need to do the train stop names and LTN and stuff in a moment. Oh. I didn't mean to do that. Oh well, it's fine. It's fine. No, I didn't carefully measure that square to be exactly around this uh, rail block build or anything. Don't worry about it. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Horizon effect? Thank you very much for the 17 months. To run 45, fantastic. Fantastic indeed. Thank you so much. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Alright, let's add some more... Scaff. Um... I don't want to leave that gap there. Seems good. Get rid of that little weird gap. I don't mind these somehow. Those are going to have to go. Maybe I should just do this out to here. That seems fine. Up 
we go. And I think we're just about finished. Oops. A little bit over here. And I think that's it. So I just need to do the LTN stuff, some station names, remove the cheat items, etc. But that's our build. Alright, let's see who we're going to raid today. Who's playing Factorio? Mucky, we already raided yesterday, I think it was. Ol Herland, A2 playthrough. That could be good. Mr. Dane. Stargate. VODs. Uh, there's a good few VODs on Twitch, and you can also find a somewhat sporadically updated backlog on the YouTube. SEK2 248K extra mods. Pig style. Let's have a peek. Don't need followers only to chat. So far, so good. Or, um. Well, mostly just to have. We're going to need a few at each location, but... Alright, quality seems okay. Let's, uh, hopefully not give this person a heart attack. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And until next time, say, uh, say, stay safe. Tomorrow we'll be continuing with For the Worthy, uh, Master, no boss fight arenas, wherein we've killed Duke Fisheron relatively early and now we get a bit of a victory lap. Uh, but till then, do take care. See you next time, Evil Pla. Happens, thanks for hanging out. All right, let's go. So we just need concrete red and small electric motors. Yo.